when you put someone to sleep, what does that feel like? Because that's the feeling I get when I hit a fucking parlay, <laughs> brother. Because you are the generator. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You crazy, but <laughs> I'm going be honest. Best podcast in the business, the name is Show Me The Money. Welcome back to the Show Me The Money podcast. This is episode 21. And where the hell is Moicano today, bro? The, the first time I, I hit a $23,000 parlay this past weekend, and Moicano has the audacity to not show up. Every weekend he tells me, yo, bro, just put 10000 Put 10000 on this guy. Easiest way to make money. What did he say this past weekend? Put 10000 on who? Tybura. <laughs> <laughs> he said, put 10 bands on Marcin Tybura now. Luckily, I did not put 10000 on Tybora. I did bet him as a dog. I did like him. I don't understand it. I thought his, I thought he was high-level grappling for the heavyweight division. I never. Have you ever in your life seen a heavyweight get armbarred like that? No, I think I think the guy did a great job. That was a beautiful yeah. armbar. I think that was maybe the second armbar of heavyweight division. Something <laughs> like that. Something like that. Fabrice so. don't go away. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, that was a high-level thing. Not, not. Especially the heavyweight, not a lot of guys can do an arm bar like that. That was an amazing. You got to yeah. shout out to these guys, Sergey Spivak. I think I didn't know who was going to win. I thought Ty Boy was going to win, but that was a nice arm Yeah, bar. I did too. So before we dive into the full recap, we have to welcome on our very special guest, Jason Anik, to the show. Let's go. Appreciate bro. you. You know, not as much star power as Money Moicano. But, you know, we'll do what we can, you know? It's a big, big shoes to fill. Hey, I think your picks might be better, though. Moicana <laughs> let us down this past weekend, bro. So we're going to die. We have a lot to cover today. I want to spend probably the majority of today's show on USC 305. But before yeah. we do that, make sure I got to fill in for Moicano. Like and subscribe right now to the show. As soon as we hit 50K subs, we are flying in MMA fans to spar and train with Gilbert and Moicano. So help us get to 50K. Go hit the like and subscribe button right now. So let's dive into this past weekend, UFC Vegas 95. I had an absolutely electric weekend. <laughs> my main cards <laughs> picks why, actually why, didn't. Why are you having an electric weekend? Because I hit the parlay, bro. <laughs> what do you mean, why? This is, this is the life we generate. Ch- this is the life I <laughs> live, bro. It's, it's highs and won. lows. He won the gambling. Oh, that was an amazing weekend. <laughs> he, he, he's all about the results, you know. I used, I used to be like that, you know, how on the way, I used to be like that. Like, if I train good, I have an amazing day. If I train bad, I was, like, but now, mad all day. But now you're just even killed. But now I'm like, uh, if I train good, it's like a little bit, yeah. okay, it was good. But it's still like, oh, if I train good, okay, no problem. But let better me ask you fix this. this. get better here. If I train bad... That was a bad day. I need to rest a little bit more. I got to fix this. And that's it. And the motion is there. It doesn't carry hmm. through my day. You yeah, know, it's but good. No, no, but I'm so guys. glad. <laughs> Hold on, bro. I'm so glad you're bringing this up because I've been meaning to talk about this. Okay? okay. Okay. What does it feel like when you knock someone out or make someone tap in the octagon? When you put someone to sleep, what does that feel like? Because that's the feeling I get when I hit a fucking parlay, <laughs> brother. So tell me right now, what does it feel like when you knock someone out? That's the feeling that I got. How do you know? <laughs> right. How that's my guess. You know? That's my best guess. Tell How me if I'm wrong. Know? Tell me if I'm uh, wrong. Though. No, no, no. He's nice. <laughs> when you go out there and get a finish, it, it is a great feeling, a great boost of adrenaline. He goes super high. I think that's why, honestly, a lot of guys get cut yeah. with that. Like I think that's, I'll be honest about that right now, a little let me switch that a little bit. I think Tony Ferguson and a lot of guys that kind of going downhill and is still chasing. They're not chasing. I don't. I. I. I don't know. I guess they are not financially on the need of that paycheck. Yeah. But I think the mental health they they need that adrenaline, especially uh, freaking Tony Ferguson. He used to like. Yeah. Remember He's, those photos? You remember no when doubt. He, he was in a row. And they show a photo before and after. Remember that after everybody was messed up? I think those guys are on that feeling of... And I think that's the not a good feeling that the fight adrenaline does with you and also the gambling does with you. Because you are the generator. You're crazy. But <laughs> I'm be honest. 
you financially on a good place that you, you have a lot of money that you can play safe. You don't go too crazy. You don't go downhill. But that's why I don't like bet that much because those guys yeah. go beyond and they need that feeling of winning and they change. You said yeah. that that like no, you don't no, bro. Chase. I'm telling you, I know, I know. We can joke about this, but I'm being dead serious. I really do believe I can relate to what you just said about Tony Ferguson, yes. or you, or anyone. You're chasing that that shit, and you're also trying to prove the doubters wrong. I'm telling you right now, this past weekend, I've hit bigger bets in my life than 21k. But this weekend, that winning bet meant so much to me because all these little keyboard peasant <laughs> warriors on the social media, I just wanted to stick it to them. The same way Tony Ferguson probably wants to win a fight and tell everyone to go fuck themselves. See, like, I won't. Or, yeah, like, I'm telling you, I can relate to this shit so much. Obviously, it's two completely different, you know, topics, but it's the same, it's the same concept. I really believe that. And I know that, I know that feeling of wanting to chase something, wanting to hit something, wanting to prove people wrong. Or just feel that rush, feel that adrenaline rush, you know? But, so, you know, like fighting and getting to that level, you've even heard Volkanovsky talk about, you know, there's a fight and not he doesn't have a fight on the books and almost like, what the hell am I going to do with myself? And I think he was yeah. drinking a little bit before that rematch yeah. with Islam. Feels, he, you feel empty. You're yeah. Like, what, what am I doing? Like Even Dustin. Dustin, poor year. Shout out to Dustin. We love Dustin. But, you know, what, I need a date. I need a date. I think. Exactly. Yeah. When you need something like that, that you like... You are unbalancing a couple things. You know what I mean? Like it's something that you that is not right. And if you need, go go there and get help on that. You know, go see a psychologist, go see a pastor, go go find and get balanced because is the the best feeling is for you to want to. You know what? I want to fight. That's different. I want to fight. I love to fight. So yeah. let me get another fight. But it's not that like oh wow. I need to fight, bro. I need a date. <laughs> that is different. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. I want to fight. It is wrong feeling. It's a great feeling. I need to fight. I need a date. It's not a good feeling. So yeah. I think that's when it's the same thing with the batting. Like, you, you know what? It's a UFC this week and this guy gets so, or at the same this big <laughs> fight. But I'm working, I, I I'm working on kinda, it, bro. He, he wants to bat. If you got a couple good. guys <laughs> are already eating. I need to bat. <laughs> and, and they lose. And they. <laughs> They lost and they yeah. go to the casino, chase that win back, <laughs> and then they go downhill, bro. And then the rent yeah. money, and then yep. that's right. why, like, and then you're sitting at a table eating a fucking bucket of ice, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and you call him Pat Downey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want you to know since you talked to Pat Downey, I remember you came to me and said, Yo, you can't hit up Pat Downey to go to Hard Rock, he's training. He hit me up twice since then, asking me to go. I told you. There's two sides to every story, bro. I'm and just you letting said, you know. And what you said, no, don't. Oh, of I'm course I going. said yes. Yeah. <laughs> you guys end but up going? The thing is, is he, he lives next to a casino, bro. He's going with or without me. He's fighting this weekend, bro. No, no, no. He, <laughs> no not, this was like weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> this was weeks ago. Not like a couple of days oh ago. Oh, my but, God. But yeah, he's, he's fighting in Vegas uh, at the CJI this weekend. Bro, he's a two, he's a two or three to one underdog. I got to get your opinion about his first round matchup. It's oh, a little bit off script here. You see who's fighting? Luke Rockhold. First yeah, round. so. Wow. Plus 200 underdog. Is Pat a live dog there? <sighs> it is, but it's a tough fight because Luke can play bottom very good. That That's the only yeah. concern. But I saw Luke Rockhold is training. He's training a lot of high level guys. He's going to check Matt in the, in the California, training a couple high level guys. So take down. Pat Downey will smash it. Pat Downey is going to take him down for yeah. sure. If he's able to do the in and out game, what's the in and out game? When you play a grappler, that the guy's going to be on bottom. You cannot punch the guy. You need to get on his side control. You need to make a point. You got to try to sub the guy. If Pat Downey is fresh, take take a look down and he score, boom, two, two points. It, and they're going to count like an MMA count. It's not going to be actual the wrestling or grappling points. It's going to be a 10-9. So if Pat down and take him down in pressure, it feels a little uncomfortable, step out, step in again, make that game in yeah. and out game, boom, I think he's going to score. He's going to win a couple of rounds. Yeah. And then it's the best thing because then if you look at rock hold, you start getting uncomfortable then he got to open up and chase him more. And then that's the chance yeah. that uh, for sure. 
pat down and gas together. But uh, on the good positions and one by decision, I don't think he's going to be a finish on that fight. It's not an easy match, but he for sure he's a live yeah. dog on that fight. I'm betting on him, bro. You know, of course me. You I are. bet on all my friends. Yeah. I bet oh, on all my for friends. Sure I'm betting on him. Yeah, we knew. <laughs> <laughs> we knew, right, Jason? We knew. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, well, let's move on. I don't know how much of the card you guys got to see this weekend. Uh, it, was, it was talked about as being one of the worst USC cards <laughs> of the year. But I will say... Based off of that expectation, I thought it per overperformed a little How, bit. Uh, rate that zero to ten. I mean, it's still not good. But, <laughs> I just but think, Gilbert, like if you had action yeah, on every fight, yeah, like this guy, right, where you got money on all <laughs> oh, these yeah, fights, yeah. you and I probably can't gamble, yeah, right? Yeah. So, it, I mean, imagine, yeah, I would have some You're interest. To, on some, right or no? Yeah, I probably could. Yeah. You know so, what I mean? So you I betting, probably could. Betting this weekend. I probably will be betting this weekend, <laughs> especially after being on this show. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. I don't even want to recap but, this past weekend. I'm so but excited. But did you watch weekend. the card at this last he, A week? little bit. Here and there. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so, I'm yeah. and I watch most of them, but here and there, you know, I got a you know, I got a family like we Me all too. do. You yeah. got sometimes yeah, you gotta yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, and, and that was the weekend that I like I don't have to pay attention. So I'm good. So I was playing I was playing with the kids, I was having fun. I saw the results on the Yusef Zalaw. I saw that he won, that he got a finish. I was like, wow, okay. Submission that, finish. Nice finish. That was like one of the part <laughs> of it. I, I like he, he, he was on the mic a little bit crazy after yeah, that. I yeah. saw that a little bit. He was funny. Yeah. I like this guy a lot. He, he actually a great fighter. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that was the only thing that I watched. And so then uh, there was Danny Barlow massively oh, underperformed. I that one. He did win on the scorecard. I don't know how much you saw about that fight, I, but it was not. The no. performance the UFC wanted, in my opinion. Like, yeah. I thought they wanted in. This was his coming out party. Yeah. Get a highlight knockout. At yeah. least inflict some damage on this guy. Yeah. Very close fight, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, And it wasn't the performance that I think the UFC wanted. The one fight that was very impressive with me was the Chepe Mariscal fight against Damon Jackson. He beat the brakes off Damon really Jackson watch. for three rounds. I'm very surprised. That fight could have got stopped a few yep. times in, in the third round. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I did see that. And I guess what? He didn't make weight, which I think is going to be continue to yeah. be a little bit of an issue. But great performance. You know what? It's like a card like that that's not great on paper. And then you did have people like me sort of tuning in for Barlow. And then that disappoints, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, when 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 the couple highlights are sort of, eh, you know. Right. But Shepe was impressive. But to me, the fact that the fight wasn't all that competitive. I'm looking for a more competitive fight. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And he wasn't a huge favorite. He was, I think, a two or three to one favorite in that matchup. Um, Damon Jackson was a dog, though, man. He was held in there and he yeah. was tough. I thought it was a little closer than the scorecard, especially. Or it was like 30 25, 30 26. Early on, I think the first round was a little, I don't know. But you hyped me up a lot on that guy, Danny Barlow. I was start looking, but yeah. Something happened. He might was a little bit injured before. I think something, maybe mentally, right. pressure. He didn't, I saw that he, he didn't pull the trigger, you know. He, yeah. And the guy was kind of taking, he was kind of watching the guy too much. He, and when I saw his highlights, he was letting no go. He was just, right. this time maybe it was a little bit of pressure. People start putting a lot of expectation on the guy mm -hmm. or maybe a little injured. Maybe, but I think I'm almost sure as a fighter, I know something happened with this guy. Maybe a little pressure, mm. maybe injury, maybe a little thing. He was overthinking too much, but yeah. he's a good fighter. Yeah, I'm with you. And then the main event, this one was unbelievably confusing to me because there was a legitimate argument before this fight happened of who's the better grappler out of these two heavyweights. <laughs> Marcin Tybor is very well-rounded, yeah. good takedown defense, good grappling. He got Tui Vasa out of there in round one with his, with a rear naked choke. I cashed on that submission <laughs> too, by the way, so I don't always lose. I sometimes <laughs> hit these long shots. Um, but I didn't know who was the better grappler going in this fight. And I looked at the fight as Tybora has good takedown defense and is probably a little better on the feet. And that's why I ultimately went with Tybora as the plus 130 dog. He ended up losing. I went to the bathroom in the first round, came back out, and Sergei Spivak was celebrating. <laughs> I was like, what the hell just happened, bro? And I had to rewind the tape. And and then I rewound, I rewound it, and I was, like, confused because, like, Tybora was winning, but then he just got armbarred. And I was just like, oh, my God. So that was a very confusing fight. Gilbert, what do you make of uh, Sergey Spivak versus Jalton Almeida? I kind of like that fight. I love this fight. I saw Jalton Almeida. He's crazy, you know, because yeah. I think I was there in Brazil November past year when he fought. He's supposed to fight. I know uh, Derek Lewis got the fight on short notice. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who he was fighting. Who, Almeida? 
Yeah, who's Almeida was he supposed he was scheduled to fight a heavyweight in Brazil? Maybe uh, Jose Struck, maybe no. Um, but a one. guy pulled out on the on like two weeks, and Derrick Lewis got the fight. Yep, and he was taking him down. He couldn't do much, bro. Brazil, if you get in a finish, they love you. If you're not getting a finish, yeah. he, only grappling, they boo. They I, think it was Vol- <laughs> I think it was Volkov. Maybe it was Volkov. Yeah. I don't know, but if, yeah. okay, the guy pulled out, and then. He had a crazy hype, especially in Brazil. Yeah. After that fight, bro, they kill him. Like, yeah. They kill him. Do you think? It's interesting. Do you think that Sergey Spivak is anything for Jonathan Almeida? No, that is an easy fight for Almeida. Because, yeah, I think it's a bad matchup for Spivak. I think Almeida knows that, which is why he's pushing for that fight. Yeah, and it's kind of like everybody's schedule on that, right? We got yeah, that's true. We got Jose Struk take cut man versus Tuivasa this weekend, and then we have uh, uh, Siu again. He got a fight Volkov. Yeah. And then Tom Aspinall is too much ahead. John Jones is there with Stipe. Everybody kind of is yeah. scheduled. Yep. So that's the next fight to make for sure. Especially that Steve, like, he got hurt. He got maybe one punch. And one thing yeah, down. right? Yeah. So no injury. So I think they're going to make that fight. I agree. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the odds are there. I just think Almeida is an animal. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, you can't take that loss against him against Curtis Blades. He was ragged on Curtis Blades and then he was. He yep. just made a mistake. Left it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it goes, right? Um all right, well let's dive into USC three oh five. If we can put that on the screen, Kyle. These yeah. odds and these fights are going to be brought to you by Fliff. Now, I have to admit we lost our Fliff parlay from the last yeah. show. We kind of talked me in the Marcin Tybor, so I'm sorry to everyone that tailed. However, we are now one and one on the show parlays. We are two parlays in. We are up, I believe $133 in net profit. So we hit the first parlay week one for $333. And then, or I'm sorry, for 233 profit. Week two, of the sh- we ended up losing 100 So we are up 133 on the show. Let's see if we can put together a parlay. We're going to go through this full card. We'll see if, if Jason's willing to give us Moikana's pick. And then me and Gilbert will each give you one pick that we think is not going to lose either. But let's uh, start with, I guess let's just dive right through the card. Uh, early prelims. Or let's click on, is this prelims or early prelims? That, no, that's prelims. Early prelims, yeah, that one there. There we go. A uh, couple fights that are like a little hard for me to pick because we got that Chinese guy, Song Kinan. Song Kanan, he, yeah. Say that again? Song Kanan. I, I, I did it more Kanan. <laughs> <laughs> Song Kanan. Uh, so this guy, I saw him when he fought Ian Gary. Yeah. Remember Ian Gary pissed mm, him up? Right. But yeah. At one point, he ate a remember Ian Gary yep. ate a left hook and he was down kind of like a little bit. Yep. And the, you know the crazy thing about that, people have no idea. The crazy thing about that fight, this guy was gonna do the camp here after that fight. Yeah. So he came to America, he fought Ian Gary, he was on the gym Monday. So do Ian Gary. These both guys at the gym. No he way. Kinda, yeah, he kind of took a week off because he was all messed up. And the next week, he was pointing already. He was training. Ian Gary was training again. So that was kind of cool to see <laughs> it because they fought. And I, I had no idea that the guy was going to come to the gym. And then they fought Saturday. And then we're kind of so, yeah, yeah, you pissed the guy up a little bit. And then I looked to the side. The guy walked to me and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what is going on? So a very nice guy. Man, he worked very hard. And mm-hmm. sometimes MMA is very, is very cruel because this guy works so hard. Yeah, I, I, he, he won my respect, you know, because after one week his face was good. He was back in training. He put on a crazy amount of work, but he's fighting Ricky Glenn. How, how's that odds? Uh, yeah. So, so Song Kanan is the minus two twenty five favorite on Fliff. Okay. Uh, and I think it's a good, I think it's a good fight for him. I think it's a good bounce yeah. back fight. The Kevin Jusset fight is a tough loss, but he went the distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Ian Machado, Gary, no, no harm in you know losing in yeah. round three to him. Um, he, you know, he beat he Rolando injured, Bedoya. Yeah. You know, I think this is a winnable fight for him. Um, okay. Obviously, the odds. So you, you know, got him. You well. got Kina. You got Song Kina on that. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Song Kana on there, just as a show pick. Kana. Yeah. And how about the next fight? How about these these other fight? Um. Yeah. So that's so Tom Nolan is like I will say one thing here. Okay. Tom Nolan is a fifteen to one favorite. Yeah. Jason. Wow. Fifteen to one favorite. And Dominic Ray's brother here. Is oh, he's a, Dominic Ray's brother? Right. Alex Ray? Is he really? I yeah, that's so. right. He is. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I yeah. think so. Doesn't look a ton like him, but he is Dom. 
wow. yeah i think he is i'm so, let me let me double check yeah he is i'm pretty sure so, so i don't want to feel stupid here why 15 to 1 that guy's that good tom nolan so here's what i'll say bro tom nolan if you look at the tape even in his round one knockout win his last fight he got tagged he got huh. dropped like he's very hittable and, in round and one. And how is Alex Reyes? He hasn't him? fought in years. Like but I think six hard. He years. Has a couple knockouts at least. Yeah, I think I think he's live for an early finish. I think someone's going out in the first round in this fight. Oh, first round. My opinion. And the guy's fifteen to one. So Alex Reyes is a good bet, then, right? Yeah. He, so he he's a big underdog. So if you think he has any chance of getting a, a knockout I know. early, I have no idea. Uh, he could be a good underdog bet watch here. Well, you know, first round knockout, you probably get fifteen or twenty to one. I think I it's think. like yeah, I think it's like twenty or thirty. It's there you go. Crazy. There you go. Stay tuned. Check out the Maddie Bets Twitter, Facebook, Instagram because I might be I might be betting Alex Reyes here round one, depending no. on what the odds are. I gotta wait closer to the till Saturday. Okay. But that's something I want to look at here. So. Um, so now we're moving up to the yeah. Prelims. Let's move up the card here. Let's scroll down so we here. We got Kyle. my brother there, Herbert Burns fighting. Yeah, Jack uh, Jenkins in trouble. Herbert Burns. So that was that was boom. My brother's coming to a lot of to a very hard moment to be honest. He had a shoulder injury, two LCL surgeries mm. back to back, and uh, last fight he lost by TKO. No confidence going to the fight, like mm. a lot of uncertainty, and then. Come from three losses, bro. So he must win. That's yeah. he's, and I like he's gonna be hard because he cannot be partial in that fight. So it's my little brother. So he must win this fight to keep his his job. You know, if yeah. he loses, we know he's out. He has no chance. Right. So the last I, I talked to him yesterday night. Uh, the timing difference they twelve hours ahead. So he's he's fighting eight a.m. on Sunday there. So it's gonna wow. be kind of eight p.m. Wow. Uh, Saturday here, so he's kind of like acclimating. He's waking up like 4 a.m., so staying awake, walking a little bit, then do warm-up, training at that time, take a nap, then training again. So it's kind of acclimating very, very good. But Jack Jenks is no, that guy has a good heart, couple crazy uh, yeah. light kicks, hits hard, durable. I, man, for sure, I'm, I'm, I hope my brother wins, but he's going to be a tough fight. Yeah. But the, the conversation that we had before he leaves to the fight is, bro, make sure you let everything in that cage, you know? So yes. 100%. 100%. Depends on the results. For sure, you can go your way. You can yeah. go. You cannot go in your way. But make sure you don't leave nothing inside. Oh, I couldn't do that. No, do everything you can. Yeah. And, and you're going to be fine with that feeling of when you lose, if I gave everything, I'm fine with So right. make sure you let everything in that cage. Yeah. And I hope he wins, but a, a tough fight. Now, I will say, so Jenkins coming off of that arm injury yeah. back in 2023 against Chepe Mariscal. And he ha Jenkins has been submitted twice, bro. He got submitted back in 2018 by rear, rear naked choke in 2017 by an arm he bar. Has, he has any stats on his takedown defense? Uh, I can pull that up on. Let me try to pull that up here. Because if I, bro, I have... Two brothers, right? I'm the middle brother. I have Herbert and I have Fred. My my older brother Fred is great jiu-jitsu competitor too. Navy SEAL in Brazil, Marines, wow. uh, black belt on judo. But Herbert has the cleanest jiu-jitsu from the <laughs> yeah. And I have no shame on say that because he was always more technical, always super slick. I do believe if he gets the fight to the floor, it's about a time to that guy catch a submission. Is that? Good, but mm. it's a problem on. on hey, the I love me, I love me a good submission prop, bro. Oh, is Gil, how's his confidence going into this one? We, bro, is your last shot. Make sure you give like that was the conversation. It's your last shot. Don't don't put a lot of pressure. Don't, and I make that degenerated gambler thing that we talked mm -hmm. about. Yep, you don't need that win. Yeah, if you if if you got fight from the UFC, shit, you you have your own gene. He's doing good. You can fight all the shows. Don't worry about yep. it. You don't need that win. But you need to have a desire. And you need to want that win. If you want that win, it's a different feeling. You, if you need, it, it changes the... Make it tight. Yeah. Oh, I need yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I need, it's too much. But, okay, I want that. You know? Yeah. I'm yep. going to fight. I'm going to give everything. So that was our conversation. I think he's going kind of free to the fight. He's looking good this week. But that doesn't mean nothing. The right. only... Moment that means is when you step in the cage. Then when yep. I look at his eyes, I think I'll be able to read. Okay, <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a good night. Or like, yeah, oh my god, for sure. 
So because this the fight week, I've been around so many fights. Vito Belfort, Cesar Ferreira, Vicente Luque, uh, Rashad Evans, Tyron Spong, and going, going. So many other guys, Kamar Usman. I'm being honest with you, that fight week doesn't we, we saw. We talked to Jamal Hills, crazy confident. Oh, we yeah. talked to Jan oh, yeah. Silva, crazy confident. You know it's crazy though. It doesn't mean nothing. When you step in the cage, I yep. want to see your yeah. eyes because yeah. if I if I ask you, hey Jason, how you feeling to fight this dude? And then you sitting down on the couch, <laughs> <in> the <camera>, <laughs> right? <laughs> comfortable, having a drink, you say, bro, I'm super confident. Okay. Yeah. The guy's in front of you. First round is going, it's not going your way. You're kind of having a rough start. You're not feeling yeah. good. And the guy's kind of, you're getting heat. You, you're not feeling, I want to see your response to that. You know, that <laughs> yeah, in that right. moment, I want to ask, hey, how are you doing right, right now? You yeah. know, not, not right now. Right now, I'm feeling great, you know, but yeah. we're going to see. 100%. I think we've also learned, though, from the, the variety of show guests we've, we've had, there is a difference between delusional confidence yes. and, like, a strategic confidence, like matchup type of confidence. Yep. Yeah. Like Jamal Hill came on and we all like Jamal Hill, but like he had delusional oh, he confidence, crazy. right? But there was no merit to why like he's like, I'm going to strike with this guy and, and beat him up. Right. But then we see guys like Gene Silva oh, and Gene Silva was crazy, but, but he, he gives us down. the dude. exact breakdown and down. why. And, and dude, I wanted to, run to, the, I wanted to oh, leave the show and run to the counter Puri. right with that. Yeah, they break down. But, you yeah. know, I will say to Jamal, a friend, you know, I don't think he necessarily did what he said he was going to do against Pereira. And I'm right. not, to, you know what I mean? I yeah, think he was going to go in there and take the fight to him. And I didn't see him do that. He right, looked a little right. more cautious to me. So, Agreed. but uh, yeah, man, some guys go in there. I mean, Toporia goes in there, but you know, and does exactly what he says yeah. he's going to do. Um, Who was the other guest we had that? Uh, Prates, but it was after, before the fight, uh, was Giga, Chikati. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, but he was wrong. <laughs> there was another, <laughs> there was another guy that, that, was right. that was super confident and right. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it was Carlos Prates. I don't know. Which I really want to talk about his fight because I, I have a, a good angle there, but we won't we won't dive too far ahead. Speaking of brothers, yeah. we have uh we have Junior Tafa. So well, this dude, is, I like, think this dude is Johnny Walker's brother. Yeah, not the other one. Sure. But the other dude is too? No. Alex. <laughs> this dude is. <laughs> this is Johnny Walker's younger brother. Walter. Yeah. Yeah, this is Johnny Walker's younger brother. Okay. The other guy's Dominic Reyes' younger okay, brother. Okay, there we go. We got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> we have on so here. many brothers. So, Reyes. we have Gilbert's brother on the card. Yep. We have uh, Justin Taffa's brother, Junior yep. Taffa, on the card. But Junior so, Taffa's fighting or, or just, you know, they yeah. might swap. <laughs> right. They might swap every right. week, right? So, I always get confused as a gambler. I'm like, which guy is which, right? Because they, they swap the fight. So my understanding, Junior Tafa is kind of the, youngest, the, right? the leaner, more technical yeah, guy. Youngest, yeah. Justin's kind of like the bigger, bulkier, yes. heavier hitter, right? Maybe they hit pretty similar uh, as far as power. But this is a very interesting matchup because Walter Walker, Kyle, I don't know if you can pull this up on Instagram, but Walter Walker, I follow him. I actually, mess I actually messaged him and he hit me back and said that he's winning as a dog. But if you look at his transformation, Gilbert, I want your opinion on this. His last fight, I think he fought Lucas uh, heavyweight Lucas Bresky. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. He and he lost a decision, right? Which hasn't aged that well because he went out and got starch in his last fight. But my point is, Walter Walker, incredible shape now. This guy oh, yeah. was a huge heavyweight with a belly in his last oh, fight. I, I remember. He that. has a transformation video on Instagram. Let's see if we can pull this up. The dude looks like Jalatin Almeida now, as far as physique. No way, bro. Wait till you see this, like. No, no, no. You got to go to his Instagram, Kyle. I'm going to send you the link right now. Um, I want you to see this video, Gilbert, because right now he is a plus. He's about an even money underdog. Um, he's obviously not the better striker in this matchup, but we've seen the Toffer brothers. They can get taken down and put on their back. Which one? Which one? Uh, so far right, Kyle. Right video. Yeah, yeah. Watch that this one? video. Uh, <laughs> here, I'm just going to show you the video on my phone, Gilbert. I want you guys both to see this. Um, but it's impressive here. I'll show Jason next. His whole belly's gone, bro. Oh, wow. He's a heavyweight. He looks like a light heavyweight. He's 6'6", too. I think he can come in and take the fight to Tafa, put him on his back, and keep him there. I agree. What do you think, Gilbert? Am I tripping? <laughs> He's skeptical. 
<laughs> uh, turn it down how time. is this guy grappling? Can he grapple? He's he's got he's a wrestler. I got it. I saw it. He's, oh, he's not okay. like Johnny well, Walker they, at these all. These guys winning enough. You saw I it? saw it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh he, he's not like Johnny Walker at all. He he's purely a wrestler. <laughs> he's so. not like. What do you mean with that? Johnny's a, a striker. His brother's a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> But Junior Tafa, that last fight, he obviously, you know, filled him for his brother. His leg got chewed yeah, apart. Yeah, um, yeah. So kicks, yeah. certainly you expect a better showing and being more prepared. But to me, you show me a heavyweight that transforms like that and a pick em fight. With I, respect to Junior Tafa, um, you know, yeah. Walker all day. Yeah. I like I it, bro. I like, I like it. it. Yeah, yeah. So Junior Tafa, let's look at his last few. So the, the Carlos Williams fight was canceled one that his brother stepped in. Before that, he loses by ground and pound. The Marcos Ruggiero de Lima. He beats Parker Porter in the round one. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and then he loses to Mo Usman. That was a fight where he was tagging the shit out of Mo Usman, and Usman grabs Ooh. on and just takes him down. I don't see why Walker can't do the same thing I here. Think he can. I actually think that maybe if he wears him down enough on the ground, that that ground and pound late is there. It could be live. Tonight, remember from these guys, remember from Junior Tafa, one fight that we got so mad that he was... Actually hurting the guy, tagging the guy and winning. Yeah. And then he got taken down. And then he got taken down in the last round. <laughs> and remember that he gave that, like, he got taken down in the last round and he was give that, like, <sighs> <laughs> and he don't even try anymore. Remember that? <laughs> we were talking about that fight. It's so, got to be so defeating, bro. <laughs> but if I'm his opponent and I mm -hmm. see that the guy's kind of, I don't want to say quit, but let's say the guy got yeah. exhausted and then he don't want to fight anymore. Yeah, I would just do the same thing. Maybe with more intensity on the first round, yeah. ah, making him so tired. Second round, I want to look here in the third round. And he, oh, okay, again, now I'm going to finish you. So yeah. I think Walter can do that. You know, if you say he's a wrestler, he looks yeah. in the... I mean, for me, I think he looks good. But for you, he looks like amazing shape. Whoa, but, I'm, talking, <laughs> I'm, talking about relative, I'm talking about relative to his previous body, bro. You see how big he was? I'm just kidding, bro. Yeah. You just like uh, you just fell in love with the guy's body. Look at his body. <laughs> I fell in love with a plus money underdog that looks in good shape, bro. That's all I, I like, care about. I like that. I, I will like say that. so. I Walker would, is eleven and I one. That. He's eleven and one in his career. Uh, he's coming off of the loss, but I think that was the loss that he needed to now get in the right mindset and get in shape and you know try to create a USC career because he's only in one fight in the USC prior to this. So. All right, let's let's move on. Uh, I like, I that like, that yeah, number, by yeah. the way, if you guys want to get some action on that fight, click the link in the description. You can get twenty five bucks in free coins on Fliff. He is plus one hundred five right now on Fliff. Nice. I think most sports books, he's like even money or minus one hundred five right now. So go click the link if you use code Show Me on Fliff, or just click the link in the description. You will get some free coin to get some action with it. USC three hundred five this weekend. Go ahead, Gilbert. Uh, so going to the to the main card, I love this fight to open the main card. I think it's gonna be a bang. We got Lee Jilly Young, the leech, back, the leech against Carlos the Smoke Pratis. <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna be a good fight. To be I honest, I love this fight, bro. I love this fight too. But Lee Jilly Young, we trained with him. He came with a says the guy Kenan Song Song Kenan Song Kenan yeah. Song Kenan when he came to the gym, Leach yeah. brought him. So Leach was that you. Uh, Leach is a great fighter. Sometimes he shows up, mm. bro, unstoppable. Yeah. When he beat Zaleski, when he beat a couple guys, he was just like, bro, yeah. like crazy. The only thing he's not that consistent showing up that way. If he was, he'll be a problem because sometimes he shows up and like he don't get hit. He moves so fast. Good footwork, in and out, hits hard, can't get hit. I, if he comes that way, he's going to be a bang. If he comes on his best, he's going to be a bang. If he comes, if he shows up not as good, oh, he's going to be a problem for him because Carlos Pratis, he lived for five years in Thailand. The <laughs> guy has a great striker. He's a sniper. Yeah. And he's with all that hype from this guy from, from Fight Nerds in Brazil. Those guys are break yeah. down. Yeah crazy they break you the whole down they they're all here they train strategically they're very good and these guys are sniper so if lee if lee shows up monster ready oh he's gonna be an amazing fight fight of the night yeah but if he comes a little 
Rizzi Tan, if you don't, yeah, then Carlos Bryce is going to take the best out of him. And he's a significant underdog, the leech here. But yeah. it's, do you like the fight from a gambling standpoint or you like it just... Uh, so here's the thing. When you peel back the curtain on this fight, like the leech has never been knocked out in his career. He's been subbed. Like Hamza, obviously, you know, the infamous Hamza fight when mm -hmm. he picks him up and grabs him, moves, walks him over to Dana White and, and chokes him out. That was insane to this day. But... You know, Carlos Prates isn't a guy that's going to, you know, implement that type of game sure. plan, right? I can see this being a very low volume affair. Hmm. You know, Prates is not very high volume. He is, like Gilbert said, he's a sniper. He can knock anyone out. But if this goes the distance, I don't know how judges are going to see this fight because it could be very low volume on both sides. It could be guys being very cautious, you know, in the striking exchanges. And I just don't know how I like this fight. I, I was looking at the odds. I mean, Pratis is a three to one favorite. I think that's more just about hit how how well he's performed Momentum. lately, and the fact yeah. that the leech has been off. I think mm -hmm. a couple of years, right? Yeah, the leech hasn't fought since since that D Rod robbery. I was in Las Vegas, yeah. September huh. twenty twenty two. Wow, you know what we were just talking about before the show. Me yeah. and Jason, we yeah, were just talking right, about yeah. Jason was saying if you bet on fights, you remember the exact details about how you won or lost, and you remember more about fights. We were just talking about this before you got here. I was standing. At the Circus Sportsbook at table three, <laughs> sitting there, I had money on the leech against Daniel Rodriguez. It went to the scorecards, and they fucking robbed my guy, the leech, and gave the nod to D Rod, bro. The leech won that fight. Do you remember that fight? Tell me you remember that fight. Not like that. Not like that. I don't <laughs> yeah, know where. Right, exactly. I don't know where that was. See? <laughs> that was what? Table three. Uh, that, was, that was a pay per view, no. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was D it was Diaz versus Ferguson. I was in 279. It used to be Hamza. Two years. It used to be Hamza and Diaz, yeah. right? But they and robbed then, the leech. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They robbed Okay, them now battle. I remember that fight. Now I remember that the fight. Yeah. yeah. The leech won that fight clear. I remember that there fight. There we go. Ah, leech won see. that fight. I knew Gilbert got he, my back, he did bro. the camp with us. <laughs> he was doing a lot of southpaws, a lot of boxing. Yeah. Oh, he won that fight. Yeah. And he he won. So, in your memory, why did he lose a decision if it was that clear? Because the refs bet the other side. <laughs> the judges bet the but other D, side. I know, uh, but D. Roddy was kind of chasing him forward, and he was moving mm. a lot. It looks like yeah. Rod, D. Roddy was putting pressure, but he was getting tagged because yeah, yeah. Now remembering this fight, if a leech shows up, that leech that fought Daniel Rodriguez a little bit better, he can give a lot of problems to Carlos Prates. I would just think right now because Carlos is a sniper; he don't throw a lot. If a leech is in and out, touching, don't get touched, touching and move, touching and move is going to yeah. be a problem for Carlos Prates. Mm -hmm. But again, he's inconsistent showing up like that. If he doesn't show up like that, Carlos Prates is going to put that guy to work. Yeah. He's a good fight. I'll, just... I'll tell you one thing that might hit beyond my betting card. Prates by decision is over three to one odds, <laughs> but him by knockout is like minus 130. So he's gonna throw you take, you're telling me I can get a guy by decision against a guy that's never been knocked out before? That makes a lot of sense to me to take that that yeah. number. I'm getting a three to one favorite, and I'm reversing it to a three to one, you know, plus yeah. a plus three hundred odds like on the decision. Math. So I might I might look to look to bet on that. Even though I really every Carlos Prates fight, I just want to take him by knockout. That's, <laughs> that's what I want to default to. Yeah. But I'm looking at it. I'm like you the least sprinkle something in a knockout for sure. It just doesn't pay well. It's minus one thirty. For knockout? That's what I'm saying. The decision oh, is three to one odds. Okay. Well, but he'll have him knock out in rounds one, two, and three to juice it up a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Maybe two, three. Two, three. Jason, there you go. Read who's the next fight. <laughs> Just read the name. Read the name, please. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, some nice work. Tai Tui Faza versus <laughs> Jai Zinka Mentate. <laughs> it's going to be a good fight, too, right? I love it. Dude, I'm so Rosen strike replaced fight. with Cut Man Tate. Yeah, they do have a little resemblance, you know. <laughs> you and I'm post? a twin. I can say that. <laughs> Bro, we posted that. Uh, you see our post on Instagram? Yeah, I think I yeah, did. It got like 35,000 likes. <laughs> <laughs> we posted Jarzinho versus Tui Vasa. Or uh, a cut man tape versus Tui Vasa. It was hilarious. No, and the but, other one, too, the... the Jacob's Duplessis brother. <laughs> Duplessis so reposted funny. it on his story. You saw that or no? Yeah. No, yeah. I didn't see that. You didn't see that. So that was so a, funny. A graphic of Duplessis brother. And Adesanya's brother. And Adesanya's <laughs> brother. No, that it was, was so great. funny. This one here, bro. Show him. This one was funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
Duplessis brothers are tough though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll give me Duplessis brother. Yeah. Fight all day. <laughs> oh, you want to fight his brother? We can't set that up, bro. He yeah. gets out of sign his brother? You want to defend his brother, Duplessis brother? No, not me, bro. I want to bet no, on you, it. You, you, who? I want Adesanya's brother to fight Duplessis' brother. <laughs> and I want to bet the farm on, on Duplessis' brother, bro. How much but, you weigh now, man? How much what? How much you weigh now? Yes. I'm 230, bro. 230? Yeah. How much the... the, the if I fall, I would have to get down to 185, bro. Right I can't be fighting these light heavyweights. How much you make guru weights right now? Uh, he's like 6'4". He's probably like 300. I don't know. Are you scared? I, w- I would put Is him down with a body shot easy, bro. <laughs> I would put MMA guru. It would be a left It would be a left hand of the body, and he'd be down, I promise you. What are the odds on that fight? He's Even bigger money, than you? Yeah. He's MMA bigger, guru. He's 300, kind of. I don't know if he's actually 300. Since I don't ever four. seen the guy. We Since invited him on the pod. Stopped. The offer still stands. Oh, MMA guru. Me. I will get you a suite at the Hard you Rock. You saw what he said? Yeah. Oh, he's going to hit me. You think? You think I'm a coward? I'm gonna nah, hit you from the just, back. He's just making content. He yeah, so we invited. This was like our what fourth, fifth episode. Yeah. We invited MMA Guru to come to Florida, wherever he. Where's he living? Uh, I don't know where he lives. Uh, I know I'm supposed to know who this fucking U, guy is. UK. MMA Guru. I know the name right there. there he lives in the UK, right? Yeah. So he's very viral. On oh, YouTube. he is big. He's a big guy. Look at him next to Duplessis. Now I have a picture where Duplessis went back when he fought Robert Whitaker. So you can, you know. I'm around the same size as Duplessis. What, this guy's, you know, massive. Wow. Yeah. But again, he he's not a fighter, bro. I can put him down with a body shot. <laughs> Are you a <laughs> fighter? Look at, look at the turn. I, I can turn box. the photo on top. He's with the gloves, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No. Guy's been training, bro. bro. He, look at him. I'm telling you. See the left, the the left hook to the body is is right there, bro. Yeah. It's right there, Gilbert. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. When you might but not need MMA to cut guru, to 185. You can be MMA guru, your, our offer still stands. You're welcome we to come to South Florida. We offer everything to this guy come on the party and say, oh, I'm not going because Gilbert Byrne is my... He said Gilbert's going to choke him behind. out. Yeah. He said, bro, I'm But not he loves Moicano. Moicano asked him to come. We said, MMA guru, I'll get you an all-you-can-eat buffet at the Hard Rock. We'll get you a suite at the Hard Rock. And we'll get... I think we offered him like 5,000 cash or something. I don't remember what it was. What's the draw? Why, he's why got a we, very big YouTube audience, oh, all right. and he's, but he has like oh, he a go, very engaged, like crazy yeah, yeah. audience. Like, he, gotcha. go, he go. You never saw his videos? No, is he, and he's British. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah go, see, I love go, it. Let me listen to got go, to. Brits go all day. Watch yeah. his video. He's talking about the son of dog. Or <laughs> 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 go watch the John Jones videos. The dog. He's the one that made like the John Jones is gay videos, like public to everyone. All right. That's yeah. what started and all the that. And Gary yeah. too, with the Ian Gary, the wife. And the, uh, he's very that, mainstream, that he like drama, but he does picks. He's actually pretty knowledgeable. Yeah, no, he's, he's very the, knowledgeable. He does the live, how you call it, the live action. The live picks and everything, yeah. The live picks. That's his channel right yeah. there, so. He's, uh, he's a character, to say the least. I like him. I actually like the guy. I think he's yeah, pretty yeah. funny. I, I would love to have him on the show. I would love to have him on the show, so. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's continue to break down the card here. We, we just talked on the Prates fight. So, Tui Vasa versus Cutman Tate up next. I got to tell you something, bro. I want Gilbert's opinion on this one because Gilbert is very good at picking underdogs. Tui Vasa has lost four straight fights in the UFC, but every fight that he's lost would beat Jarzinho Rosenstrike. Every Fair. single guy he just lost I agree. To. And this is the first matchup where I look at it and I'm like, this is a 50-50 fight. Why is Tui Vasa a plus 190 underdog? He's not going to get taken down. He's not if he's not, if he does, he's not going to get held down against Jarzinho. Jarzinho has zero takedown attempts to my knowledge in the yeah, UFC. Check me on that. But this is a stand-up fight. Jeez. And I think Tui Vasa's chin can hold up better against Rosenstrike. I think Rosenstrike is more technical, can maybe find the angles and and you know, but I just think Tui Vasa has very underrated fast hands and he's powerful. And if you look at the Tui Vasa versus Derek Lewis fight is an example here. That was two big boys throwing heat, and Tui Vasa's chin held up. And I look at this fight the same way. I know, I know, uh, Jarzinho is a little more technical than a Derek Lewis, but I think Tui Vasa can bring the fight to this guy and get in the win column. I think he's a very good underdog here. I couldn't agree more. I mean, f- four straight losses to me is the reason the line sits where it does. Yeah, and I look at it as a pick and fight too. And I think in his home, you know, back back at home too. But yeah. for me, when I'm a heavyweight fight. And you talked about Walker earlier. Physically, 
you know, I know we sit here a couple days out, but I like seeing these guys physically on the scale. I mm. like, I, I'll be curious to see what Tuivasa looks like physically. Cause a lot of times you can see what work has been put in by these guys, but yeah. uh, you know, a lot of guys and, and two, Tuivasa has faced better competition of late. You know, it's like Jorginho's one, two or three, but would he be Gazeev and Dawkins? That's not anything special. So to me, exactly. yeah, I mean, I think your sentiment is well received by me. It should be a pick em fight. So I lean Tuivasa. I mean, look at who he's fought, bro. Tui Vasa's last four. Now, again, the Marcin Tybora one is a bad look, I right. think. Especially when Tybora just got finished in the first oh, round. Who was that? Was Volkov in Australia? Volkov, Pavlovich, Serengon. Yep. They're all three beating Jarzinho, you know? So yep. the question is, how much stock do you put into the Marcin Tybora fight? But matchups make fights, and that's not going to happen in this fight. Yeah, this fight's going to be a, a stand-up war. I, I kind of like... Jerry Zim's defense a little bit better than the hmm. high. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's the only, my only thing is his defense is a little bit better. Mm. But he does get hit into his body. does hit hard. So grappling is going to be zero. Uh, Jerry Zim get a couple good low kicks too, like powerful low kicks. So Ivasa has some big kicks too. Ivasa too. That's a good He's point. He's a 50 50 fight. Yeah. I, I, I'm a, Huge fan of Ty. I hope he wins and get the on this win column again. Don't get cut. That that's my that's my wish. Yeah, we need a couple Ty Tuivasa yeah. and Burns. Yeah. Two wins. Herbert. Oh, well, imagine yeah. what that parlay would be. You know? Yeah, right. I gotta get in on that, bro. Stay the on underdog the underdog parlay. The underdog parlay, but. Hi, I'm a 50 50. We're gonna call that back defense. to the wall parlay. No, and that's. I, that point's very well taken. Yeah, Tuivasa is kind of like a little brawler, you know, kind of crazy. He's going to yeah. get hit from, from Jari Zinho. Jari Zinho's left hook, he can pull you down. I don't think he will put Tuivasa down, but it yeah. might hurt him. Right. And he throws those left hooks. That's kind of, it's not a wild left hook, so he's not going to land the heat. It depends where you are, he's going to land in front of your face. Boom, mm. he breaks the nose. He broke his nose a couple of times. Yeah. Jari Zinho is a 47% <sighs> striking defense to Tuivasa's 43%. Oh, so it's closer than I thought. It is, but again, numbers. But two Ivasa for way better competition, so the numbers might be. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and your point's well taken. Like I've yeah. seen a lot of moments where two Ivas is not defending himself well and being no. super vulnerable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though, and he's got a good chin. I feel like he I, does I have a good chin, but the only thing, if his defense is kind of like that. But he didn't fought a bad competition into Ivaza, then kind of like he equals mm, yeah. a little bit. Yep. So with that, I'm I'm going to retire to Ivaza on that one. Really? Okay. So are you all three on the two Ivaza side? I think so. What's that over under one and a half rounds there? Where do you lean there, Maddie? Yeah, I don't want to get uh, ahead for you, but yeah, so over one and a half on Fliff is minus one seventy, which is very surprised. Oh, never mind. I'm looking at the wrong fight. I was gonna say that number doesn't make sense. So over one and a half is plus 135. So you can get plus money on if you think this fight's going longer than seven and a half minutes. Now, one thing I will say is when you typically have, and Gilbert, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you typically, if you have two guys that are coming off of like finishing, get you know, getting finished and losing, are they a little more tentative early on? The fight maybe tends hmm. to go a little bit longer than, than it normally would. Yeah, but these guys are freaking brawler. It, it <laughs> kind of, it is, it's supposedly. Yeah. But not to Ivaza. that he's had a couple yeah. bar fights. This guy don't care, you hmm. know. Yeah. For sure, it's a little bit of pressure on the guys. Okay, if you lose, goodbye. You got to go 1FC, you got to go PFL. But I don't think he cares, you know. I think he's going to yeah. have fun out there. It, it's a different mindset when those guys, there. they don't really don't care. They're dangerous. Mm. Yeah. You know, yep. they, they, so I think this guy is still dangerous. I don't think he's going to be reason 10. I think until he fights the decency, he starts, he's yeah. he going to throw. He don't Here's care. what I'll say, bro. Tai Tuivasa comes out aggressive. Jorginho Rosenstrike has been finished three times in the first round. Now, granted, <laughs> Francis Naganu. Uh, yeah. Jalton Almeida Francis and Ingunos, Alexander yeah. Alexander Volkov though I know but Francis Ngannou yeah 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 right I understand but if you remember that Francis Ngannou fight this was like a younger Ngannou that it wasn't the more the technical no, Ngannou no, yeah. it was a, he, if you remember yeah. that fight he just <laughs> he went crazy yeah, yeah yeah 
Like it, it was. <laughs> oh my god! Why can't Tui Vasa do that? Whatever he Tui Vasa is capable of doing that, bro. Uh, I'm going Tui Vasa round one two knockout. That's gonna be on my betting oh, card. I like it. I think I like it's gonna it, pay H2. good too. I don't know what the number is I yet, hope, but we'll I see. hope you're right. So all right, let's move up the card here. Mateus Gamrot versus Dan Hooker. I have a very strong lean on this fight, but I want to hear your guys' opinion first. Well, yeah, I got. I think uh, he's a natural fight. We got a long, lanky striker, technical against a high level grappler. And Mateus Gamrot is a wrestling grappler and a grappler too. High level. He won ADCC Europe a couple times. I trained this guy, grappled with him a lot. Very, very high level. He just lost to who? Ben New Darius and uh, who was the other guy? He just had two losses and then he fought everybody. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to get knocked down because he always does. Right? Yeah. Every fight he get dropped. He got dropped by RDA. He got dropped by Ben New. He got dropped. But he recovers very good. I think he's going to get dropped, but he's going to take Dan Hooker down. Even if Dan Hooker has good guillotine, Dan Hooker might kind of dive with that guillotine. He's going to scramble out, but he's going to be on top. I think Mateus Golden Rod is he's winning that fight. We know the betting, the handicappers in Vegas know more than I do. And certainly that line, I think, is heavy for a reason. I just, as much as Dan Hooker, my brother John has talked about Dan Hooker being his favorite fighter. Just yeah, and, yeah, and just that. really in terms yeah. of just yeah. what he brings. But for me, Mateus Gamrod, if he does his homework and does what he's supposed to do, yeah. It, he sh Dan Hooker shouldn't be able to close that distance. It should be, it should be cl in the clinch. It should be tight. It should not be, give it, Hooker any opportunities. And frankly, should be kind of a boring fight if you're Gamrock. Sure. Go ahead. And, yeah. and the point that I have the most on that fight is Mateus Gamrock is being, he was Islam Makachev for Dustin Poirier during his whole camp. And you see how Dustin right. fought good against Islam. Good point. So and you see what Islam did to Hooker too. Yeah, so this guy's getting better, bro. Yeah. So this guy, even when he doesn't have a fight, he's there full camp with the other guy, helping yeah. the guy to a championship fight. Even even you saw the you saw Dustin shout him out, oh, that guy yep. helped me the whole camp. Yep. He was being slung. He did yep. everything right. After the fight, you saw these guys talk, bro. You saw that little thing I messed up here, but uh. so this guy's a high level fighter. I think he's gonna boring fight. I agree with Jason. Boring fight. But I think he's going to dominate Dan Hooker. Yeah. And he lost to Sarukyan, right? Gamrot, it was a close fight. Some close people thought, fight. We, I, yeah. the close I fight. I, he, I think or he, maybe he, he won. won. It was, yeah. He beat. I think he lost. Yeah, but he game won a, a unanimous decision against oh, Sarukyan, but it was very controversial. Yeah. I right. Think. And But either way, I mean, certainly been in there with some dudes. And oh, I, you 100%. Know, um, I, yeah. I think, I agree with you guys. I think Gamrot completely ragdolls Dan Hooker. For three rounds, like maybe he can get caught once. <laughs> he recover. might get caught a couple of times. Yeah, but, but like I but think he, he completely ragdolls Dan Hooker. I think I mean Dan Hooker has an eighty percent takedown defense, but that to me that that's that's a crazy number. Who yeah, against who? You know, right? Well, Islam took him down once, but didn't need to take finish, him. I finished yeah. him. You know, so I think that you know Islam probably has better top pressure and can yeah. keep someone down Show better. Too right, bigger. but Gamrock can just spam these takedowns. I wanted to ask you, Gilbert, there's like a myth going around in the UFC, it seems like right now, that like some of these fighters that are wrestlers physically aren't wrestling as much. We saw it this past weekend. I forget which fight it was now, but oh, uh, the, the the heavyweight, the big, uh, who's the heavyweight? Uh, Carl Williams. He comes out and stands, you know, stands, uh, which, who was his opponent? Remind me here. Uh, go scroll up, Kyle. Who did Carl Williams just fight this Not going to get weekend? much help from me and Gilbert on yeah. last week. <laughs> so Thanks, guys. Bro. I was taking my time. Uh, he fought a, a high-level striker. Uh, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Why am I blanking on this? I had a bet on it. Oh, the Jonathan oh, Denise. Yeah, Jonathan yeah. Denise. Yeah, so Carl Williams, there was a rumor that the UFC told Carl Williams or his manager or something that, hey, your fights are boring. You need to stand and strike. You need to be more excited. <laughs> Again, I don't know what's true and what's not, but do you feel like that – we're in a day and age now that some wrestlers are now like, I need to at least strike for a round or two because I'm going to get dropped. We see what happens with uh, with these fighters. Mikhaev, and like, yeah. Mikhaev, and like, I just want to get your opinion on this. Do you believe that some fighters are going to go away from their style because they might look at it as Dana or the UFC looks at it as boring? Because from a betting standpoint, you have to almost have to take this into account now. Are these guys going to... Carl Williams would have went in there and shot a takedown in the first minute hmm. nor in a normal fight. He didn't shoot a takedown until he got hurt in the second or third round. So I just wanted to get your opinion on that. I think he, 
you still can grapple, but you gotta be excited. You know, you gotta look for the finish. Yeah. I think they never said that to Khabib. They never said that to. I think they've been saying that to Almeida. That's why Almeida didn't got the fight that he was asking. Yeah. <laughs> Because that fight with Almeida, bro, the whole arena in Brazil was killing him when he fought there because yeah. he couldn't finish. Yeah. And uh, I think it, it's a way to be dominating the fight. Like, Habib never... Habib was kind of... Kamaru, too, on the beginning, before they start dominating everybody, people were always happy about this guy. But whenever they start dominating, really, yeah. like... Kobe, they have that with Kobe, too. Like, oh, you got to fight. But Kobe start putting a, such a... Crazy pace, not not the talking Kobe, but inside of the, off the, the octagon, the guy that fights that go crazy pace, take you down, keep taking it down. Even the way Bilal fought Leon Weather, I think it was very entertaining. Right, he just, I agree. He just yeah. shut the guy off, and he looks. Remember, <laughs> remember that fifth round? That fifth round for me was the best when the coach came and said, "Hey, Leon." You want me to give you that and fight for you? <laughs> and, and Leon, <laughs> shut up! Like yeah. I I know that that. That fight with your coach is not going to help. The coach saying that doesn't help. So they were so frustrated that what Bilal doing was working so much that they got frustrated. So yeah. it's entertaining as freaking Alex Pereira head kick. Right. Jerry, right. No, exactly. it's not. Exactly. But how many poor times do we have? One. Exactly. How many other things we have? One. Is, yeah. Come on, bro. And like, it's mixed martial arts. You know, when you talk about arts. position versus submission, right? And a guy like Bala Muhammad getting a guy on the ground is going to be more effective in a position. Sure. He doesn't have the jujitsu, sure. you know. Gonna, but you got to use what you have. Wait. If he's a good ground upon the ground upon the guy. But yeah. I'm, it's only one fight. I have one fight in my career that I repent okay. that I that I regret that yeah. I didn't kill the guy when I could you know because oh, no, let me guess let me take a guess that was a, he's me, a very nice guy he's nothing against the guy. uh wonder boy that was a wonder boy ah, that was easy. you know why because I came from a TKO loss from Kamaru I just fought for the title think about it I just lost from a TKO for a wrestler and now I'm gonna fight one of the best nice. strikers in the yeah in the division, so I was a little man. It's gonna be tough. So I went there and take the guy down. It was way easier than I thought. I thought I gotta be on the cage and they, they out wrestle this guy, dirty boxing. When the first take down, I took this guy down, and then when I took him down, I was just like, man, that was way easier than I thought. So I got it. I, I will take this guy more, yeah. and then I still I got five, six more variations to take this guy on the first one. But then when I get it, when I I got on top of this guy, this guy was just holding on me. He didn't yeah. try to escape. He didn't try to get up. And I accept that and on my on my head at that moment I was feeling oh if you want to stay here, okay, dope, but I'll be gonna <laughs> be round three, Drew Dober but, versus Moicano. Yeah. Drew Dober is just holding this thing on his it's back. Just hold. He's like, yeah. I he don't want to get his back taken. Yeah. Moicano's gonna choke the him guy, that was he was doing, he was just holding. Yeah. Now he, whenever I looked at fight again, I said, Man, I could have done so much thing. At that moment, I would yeah. want to play safe. But right now, when I was looking, man, I could make that guy quit, like elbow, boom, boom, right, push, right, right. punch. But at that moment, because of that circumstance that I came from a TKO loss, I don't want to open up. I don't want to do much. But I learned from that. And then every time that I put these guys down now, I try to hurt the guy and then look for submission. But yeah. it took me, thank God, it took me a win to learn. It. But yeah. a lot of guys, they don't learn with that, you know, like... You take this guy down, just chasing submission, and the guy escapes, and you're holding too much. It's not entertaining. So I get both ways. I got the fighter ways, and I got the promotion ways. The promotion, bro, we want to sell. We want you to fight for the title. But you need to have a fan base so we can sell you, so you can sell pay-per-views. We can make money. You can make money. But I think it's a both ways. But I think the fighters... You gotta start to realize, man, Mokaev was seven and zero in the UFC, twenty three yep. years old, yep. just turned twenty four, <laughs> and they cut this guy. Yep. Well, I and I think, do more, and I do know? think, and it's a very interesting question you bring up, and I know you want to move on, but I think a lot yeah. of some of the Mokaev stuff had to do with the way he rubbed some people in, in the organization right, right, overall. Right. Yeah. But I think for every guy's different. There are certain guys to answer your question where if the promotion wants excitement, they might need to go for some sort of finish, but then other guys do need to prioritize the win, you know, and they offered. Th Leon Edwards, three other guys at UFC 300 that weren't named Bilal Muhammad, right? Yeah. To sell whatever fight that was. And so Bilal ended up winning, winning, winning and finally getting his shot. Yeah. But I think some guys, you know, it's rare you get cut after a win like Mokaya oh, yeah. did. It's unreal. 
Uh, so let me, I, I want to make sure I say this properly. So I'll, I'll read the tweet out loud, but it's some random on Twitter said, my buddy who trains with Carl Williams told the UFC told him he needed to be more excited and do more than wrestle decisions. Same as they told Mikhaev explains why Mc Williams did not wrestle versus Denise. So take that for what you will. We don't know if it's true or false, but I think we all are smart enough to believe that there could be truth to it. Cause we know the UFC wants excited fights, right? And yep. And especially when you look at a guy like Carl Williams, it's like what Gilbert said. It's not about, you know, not you can take guys down, but you have to do stuff with it. And Williams is winning decision after decision after decision. Um, so I think that's that's what we're looking at here. So let's move on to the co-main event, flyweight bout. Yeah. I just want to ask you about Gamrot. Given your conviction, yeah, yeah. where's the gambling spot? Right, because no, I see Dan Hooker point. plus two sixty, yeah, and then I look at the other side. But I don't, you know, I mean, what is I it? Just is think, it Gamrot yeah. decision? I think if you're betting Hooker, you got to go TKO for a bigger number. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, there is a world where he could drop Gamrot and win a twenty nine twenty eight, yes. maybe. So maybe you just take the money line there. I think Gamrot thirty twenty seven him. I think it's just relentless I, I agree. pressure for three rounds. I mean, you see guys like uh, Umar. He gets dropped two fights ago. He gets dropped in the round. He still wins the round. Right. You yeah. know, because he just does so much after he gets yeah. dropped. Um, I can see a world where that happens, too. I just think that Gamrot is like the, the worst matchup possible for Dan Hooker outside of Islam. So, true. so but I think he ragged He can eat a, a knee on the way in. For sure. Dan Hooker has a couple of great uh, knees. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like. He can eat a knee on the way in. That knee can pull him out. You can yeah. be sure no matter how much Mataj might like that matchup, he's fucking gonna be careful for oh. sure he will 100 he has to yeah. yeah yeah dan hooker 11 wins by knockout in his career and you can break dan hooker's face and that arm jaylen and turner, he's still fighting i could not fighting. believe he survived that jalen turner fight and well, he won that high kick with jaylen bro turner, and then he broke his <laughs> arm too i know and you know he hasn't fought since then that was and, and that right and that discouraged a little bit i do believe that discouraged a little bit jalen turner because i he, agree he came to fight uh, Moicano and Mo knock him down. Moicano get up and I think he look, yeah. you know how he looks for me? And I love Jalen Turner. He's my guy. But remember Deontay Wilder when he knocked down uh, Tyson? Tyson, Tyson Fury. Boom. And Tyson Fury was out and eventually Tyson Fury wake up from resurrection and came back. <laughs> and do you remember the until wire the eyes when they look and the guy yeah. came back. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like that was my best shot. That guy came back. I think Dan Hooker and Moicano gave that look to Jalen Turner. And he's like, and he's doing everything right. You just gotta keep yeah. doing. But right. I think that kind of take a little bit. He's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Give him a little break. He's Great like, point. I agree. I yeah, I totally agree with you. Jalen Turner. He's a monster. Yeah, he's a monster, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens in this Dan Hooker fight. I'm excited to see that one. I think I, I got to ask one last question to go over on that fight because going back to what we were talking about of like, you know, trying to do more with these takedowns, Gamrot does have five wins by submission on his record. You know me, I love a good submission prop, <laughs> right? But I got to ask Gilbert if that submission is live at all here because Gamrot has not had a submission since 2021. That was Diego Ferreira, uh, but he had... Two back to backs. He Kamar uh, Jeremy Stevens the fight before that, and he has five in his career. I think only two in the USC, I believe, or five total in his MMA career. Is he live at all? On if he if he continues to spam these takedowns on Dan Hooker, do you think that he's able to find some sort of submission, or you just see a decision? I think on the back, the Dan Hooker has good defense. Dan Dan Hooker understand the guillotine game. Has good guillotines. Yeah. Leg locks, those guys can do leg locks too. I don't see Dan Hooker tapping unless he's, <laughs> unless he's freaking uh, Islam, got Islam like Kimura, with the freaking yeah. Kimura. Other yeah. than that, he doesn't tap. So he would go with one loss by submission, Dan Hooker? Uh, three. Who so, was that? Uh, it might have been a while ago. It was. Yeah, I don't. I don't I yeah, don't it was. Get uh, right, back it? in 2012 FC8 Legend FC8 back in the day so and, yeah I think uh Mateus Genra is a very is a high level grappler but he's not a finisher yeah. he's a controller ground and pound scramble crazy it's kind of like 
it's kind of like harder when the guy not gonna get tired and he's gonna keep coming. Yeah. He's harder to fight a guy like Kobe. Like a Mirab kind of. Mirabi, Kobe, like at, at his best, yeah. game rock, those yeah. guys gonna keep <clears throat> coming. You're gonna knock him down, gonna keep throwing, they're gonna keep coming. So, yeah, yeah. I think I don't think he's gonna finish, but I think he can get a, a dominant win if he doesn't eat the knee. I think, yeah, I think uh, Dan Hooker is doing that match without trick to give him freaking fly knee on the beginning and then put game rock out. Yeah, dude, <sighs> yeah, I like it. All right, well, let's move on to the co main here. This is a fight I'm excited to see because Kai Car France, man, I, this is a guy I used to bet on. I bet on him by knockout against Cody Garbrandt. Um, a really fun, one. exciting fighter. What'd you say? You got that one. Yeah, yeah I got that one. I got yes. that one. Uh, now, Steve Ursig, we all know because Gilbert makes it very clear that whenever we have a guest on, oh, Pantoja, that's who it was earlier we were thinking about. We had Pantoja on. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah. the first two seconds of the show, you know, this guy, Maddie bet against you, right? <laughs> he just, every person that comes on the show, he always right has out a, gate. Yeah. So, and I, so it's I so took first, that was a very, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, you might be but, a middleweight, but Pantoja, fuck you up. A hundred percent. So I get choked out and won in that <laughs> one. But, but Steve Ursig, man, I just, I'm a big Kai Car France fan. But when I look at this fight, I'm like, where is he better anywhere than Steve Ursig? I just don't know. Maybe power? Maybe power. I think those, those guys being a flyweight, the, the intriguing thing on that fight, they're two strikers, so it's going to be a good fight. And believe you or not, those guys being flyweight, they both guys get a knockout power. Yeah. But with that being said, I think Steve Ursig is getting a win. Maybe a finish. We saw Kai Kyra friends have been finished on the body by Brandon Moreno. Mm -hmm. I think he's that guy that has a Great team, but the body's not that strong. And mm. I think Steve yeah. Ursag with the good boxing, good elbows, good movement, super tall for the division. Mm -hmm. He's way taller than, than Kai Kaiser France. He, so. I think he's gonna look way bigger. Yeah, yeah. he's way bigger. I agree. What do you, you know, I saw a line Ursag minus 166, Kai uh, Kara France come back, but it's it's, 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 it's it's ballooned, I think. So right now Fliff has Urs up. Oh no, it's it's minus one eighty. It's not too bad. All right. Yeah, I think it's going to continue to go up, though. Yeah. I agree with everything both of you have said. And, yeah. you know, I understand that it's somewhat of a local venue for Cara France, but Ursig was born in Perth, yeah. just fought a real tough fight Before for the, the belt fight. where some yeah. people think, I don't, I think Pantoja won the fight, but yeah. some people think Ursig did enough to win the fight. I just, yeah. I look at the trajectory. Cara France hasn't fought in a year to me. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this line creeps over 200 at the time. And respect to Cara France. He's a guy who I've followed for a long time. Sure. Yeah. But when you lose two straight, you know, I see the number four by his name and the seven by Ursic, but Kara France doesn't feel to me like the contender he was yeah. a couple years back. Now that you see the Amir Albazi fight, though, that was like the robbery of the century. True. But, and, you know, and another so. thing, too, those time off that he took, he's like one year layoff, right? Yep. Yeah. He had, I know for sure, one was an injury, but he had a concussion. It was a bad concussion. That's right. The one that he pulled out in uh, Sydney last year against Manel Capi. Yeah. That was a concussion that was very bad. So, yeah. If you had a concussion, you're fighting that freaking Steve Ursag. It's <laughs> not a good thing. You know, Steve Ursag hits yeah. very hard, good box, very tough for the division. I got Steve Ursag winning that fight. Maybe yeah. by a knockout, by, by a finish. I don't know. Yeah. Kaka France is very tough, but I see yeah. Ursag finishing that fight. You know, we all seem to have a lot of respect for Ursag. I think this is going to be his fifth fight in the UFC. His fourth, right. his fourth yeah. walk is for right. the title. But, there, you know, the UFC doesn't blindly give these title shots, right? Jamal yeah. Hill got a pretty quick title shot against Glover and earned yeah. it. So I think this guy belongs where he is. And I think It's yeah. aged well. I mean, because, yeah. like you said, that fight, the, the fight against Pontoja was very competitive. And it was, it was an entertaining fight, too. Yep. What's interesting to me about Steve Ursig is I think his grappling is very underrated. Hmm. Six oh, wins by left. submission. Yeah, Only two wins by knockout. So he's known as this guy with really good boxing and hands. But outside of that left hook that put out Matt Schnell, which everyone is pretty much knocking out Matt Schnell, if we're being honest. <laughs> like <laughs> the level of disrespect. I'm just I'm just calling it what it is, bro. <laughs> like everyone Matt Schnell in his last what? He's been knocked oh out five God. times, bro. Knocked out by Nikolau. <laughs> like I like this guy. I like Matt Schnell. He I don't, you, we're bro. gonna bring Matt Schnell. I, I, I'm actually the craziest yes, you are. He's no, 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 the, the craziest guy. gambling beat of all time I had was on a Matt Snell fight. Do you remember uh when Matt Snell fought uh the Chinese dude? What's his name? I oh. know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Uh yeah, yeah. The triangle choke in round two. Oh yeah. 
How do you pronounce his name? The Sumi Darji. Sumi, Sumi, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, Suma Darji, I believe. So yeah. he remember like that fight, starched. That fight was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of the most insane I remember comebacks. That, that match that now, was props crazy. to match now on that comeback. I was on the other side. I had Matt Schnell get knocked out. He got like some wrestler to stop that fight. Oh, so yep. you, but you bad on him or you bad on me? I lost. Matt Schnell oh. came back and subbed this guy because this guy beat fight. the shit out of Matt Schnell and then gassed and then got subbed. <laughs> the rest yeah, didn't yeah, stop yeah. the fight. Yeah, that's it was. Right. I like Matt Schnell was a very entertaining fighter. I didn't mean any disrespect, but <laughs> all I'm saying is Steve Ursig hasn't really knocked anyone out high level outside of like a Matt Schnell. So I just think that Kai Car France has a pretty good chin. I think Ursig could find a choke here in this fight, and that mm. could pay huge. A submission here could pay pretty pretty decent. I don't know what the number is yet. We're filming this on a nice. on a Tuesday, but I like Ursig by I decision like or submission. I think he wins the fight. I think he finishes. I don't know. Maybe a knockout, maybe a submission, but yeah. I think Ursig is gonna finish. And this is a three rounder, three rounder. So, I do, uh, Gilbert. I'm curious what you think. You know, for me, whenever I see a three round fight. A high level UFC fight that's only three rounds, it pisses me off. You know what I mean? Like, and maybe this one is a borderline, but but a lot of I don't know, man. I like seeing five rounds. Like, I know your main event, you and Brady. Like, imagine how you and Brady as a three round fight. No, yeah. you know, I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I agree. agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. That fight could be five rounds. Yeah. It'd be better. Yeah. yeah. I think if it if if that was a uh, a fight night card, yeah, main event, that would be, you know, I yeah. think it'd be a solid main event. Five rounder. So, all right. Well, we're going with Ursig here. It seems like we're, for the most part, on some favorites this card. You know, outside of like a Tui Vasa, yeah. maybe a couple other dogs. Yeah. But the main event's going to be the tough one here. Drikas Duplessy takes on Israel Adesanya. I believe Fliff has Adesanya right now as a minus 135 favorite. Interesting. Duplessy as the even money underdog here. This is a very tough fight, right? We saw the Sean Strickland versus Adesanya fight. Duplessis is on record saying that that was not a bad night for Izzy. That was Izzy facing his kryptonite, which when I really dissect this, I was talking to Jason about this before the show. I think Duplessis is very high intellect, smart guy. Yes, and I think, that, uh, I think that he looks at that Sean Strickland fight and says that's Izzy's kryptonite and that's what I'm going to do against him. And I think the way to beat Adesanya is controlled pressure. Yes. Not running forward, getting starched and countered, but also not, you know, you have to still bring the fight to him and stay in his face. Stay out of kicking range, be in his face. And I really do think that Duplessis can do that and also mix in the takedowns up against Ooh, the cage. I got to believe the, the plus money here, the underdog, yeah. makes sense. Our guy, Hey Jive Picks, which, by the way, if you're not in the home of Fight Picks Discord, we're going to put that in the description for you guys. Go check that out. Our guy, Hey Jive Picks, just put his biggest bet of his life in. Wow. $4,000 on Drickus Dude wow. Plus' money line. Wow. Biggest bet of his life. I got I feel like I got to tell my guy Hayden, bro. <laughs> tell you, that moves the needle for me hearing that. Yeah. What do you why, think? Why, why do you think? Hayden's good. All right, so I'll start on this, and then yeah. we'll get to the pro yeah, yeah. Gilbert over there. Yeah, man, it, you know, so I saw this f fight as close to a pick -em earlier today, and I guess maybe some money had come in on Drickus, but now back to Adesanya. So, yeah. you know, trying to be the first, Adesanya trying to be the first three-time middleweight champion. And for me, it's like, I really root for his greatness, for Adesanya's greatness. Like, yeah. I really, some of these UFC champions, like, I want their continued you. reigns, you know? Like, I want mm -hmm. them to do things like John Jones and defend these titles. But Trickus, man, to me, is just a very difficult matchup here for Adesanya. Now, <clears throat> I'll be interested to see how Adesanya looks physically, you know, and I, I do think you're going to get the best possible version of Adesanya at yeah. this particular stage of his career. For me, this fight to me, and I know we're going to give out our picks later, right? Or, or, or a pick on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I, for some reason, I don't see this fight going the distance. I think someone gets a finish in this fight for really? some reason. And I don't know exactly who. I mm. believe which, when you talk about Drickus and how smart he is, right? He also was smart not to take the title fight when he wasn't healthy back in the day when Strickland went and yeah. beat Adesanya. And that's really important. You even hear about Bilal Muhammad right now talking about when he's going to defend. He's not going to defend in Abu Dhabi because it's too soon. My brother John talks about Jessica Andrade back in the day going to China to defend after three months. And so I do think the way things have shaken out, Duplessis is calculated. He's certainly going to be ready. Yeah. It's hard for me not to root for Adesanya, and I don't like rooting for guys. I will be rooting for Adesanya's greatness. But I think this is a really tough matchup, and I believe 
the power advantage lies with Duplessis, and I think Duplessis can take some shots. Uh, I yeah. think if it's a more technical fight, Adesanya is going to be favored. I think if it's a brawl, it's going to favor Duplessis. Yeah. The last thing I'll say, Sean Sheehan from SureDog said on John's podcast this week that he thinks Duplessis needs to treat this as if he's the challenger. And I think that was a great point yeah. of Duplessis going in as if I'm going into enemy territory. This yeah. guy's the champ. I got nothing to lose. Going in it with that mindset I think would benefit him. Yeah. I lean Duplessis, root not a sign. Because Izzy as a contender is very different than Izzy as a champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a contender, he comes in as a killer. You know, he he uh, he got two finishes in his last two contender yeah, yeah, yeah. fights. The one fight where he didn't yeah, was going sure. up and weight against Blahovich as a contender. But Whitaker and Pereira yep. as contender fights, he's a different guy in there. So that's the one thing that gives me some some drawback. And then what do you make out of Dan Hooker came out and said that is he's had a year off. He's able to reinvest in his strength and conditioning. Yep. Whereas he was just so active as a champ. Like Gilbert, I want to get your opinion on that because, you know, Instagram is Instagram, pictures, videos, you never really know. But he does look bigger. And Dan Hooker said he's hitting harder than ever. Yeah, but Dan Hooker, his teammate, he's guy, like yeah. if you ask me about right. You're gonna hype how is a, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how is Brendan Allen look? He said, bro, monster, you know, kill this guy. Yeah, he look like you're Right, no, it's, it's true. You're hype I, I'll, I'll say sure. that. I'm not going to be, oh, bro, my teammate, I saw his porn yesterday. He looks so bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to say that. Right. Uh, yeah. I think it's two points on that fight. I think I just say I put a lot of weight already thinking about the Pereira as the biggest fight that he can have, like beating Drakers. That's why he, I think he put a lot of weight. Yeah. I already like thinking about Pereira. But I think Drake, bro, I trained with Drake a couple of times. He came before yeah. he got to the UFC, he came to the couple camps right here. And that guy is so, a very nice guy, awkward. amazing guy, but stylistically, bro, so hard to figure that guy out. So awkward. Like, he's, he's that kind of guy. <laughs> like, we, I like to time a lot of the jabs. And sometimes I boom, overhand rise. Sometimes I throw it together. I like to time. So, his jab was coming first time that we spar. And then I got out of the jab. And when I was going to throw, when I came back, I got <laughs> hit with the jab. Because it's kind of like, and he does that on purpose. He does a different timing. Sometimes he throws a little slow. Sometimes he throws, he step with it. He changes things. He has a great heart and great cardio. It doesn't yeah. look like it because sometimes he gets a couple of deep breaths. You do something, yeah. big and you look at him, he's like, <gasps> and then yeah. when you look like that, but I say, he I'm had gonna... the surgery though. Yeah, but when he that's looks, good. but I think he's not gonna change. That, no, that's... no, he. So, I, but I so... think that's still his thing. He like he yeah, looks yeah. and he like. <gasps> <gasps> Dominic Cruz does that too. Dominic Cruz on the middle of his thing, he stops and then, he... <gasps> but he can go freaking five rounds. So is Drickers. Drickers, when he does that, I say, okay, he's tired, let's go. And then he, he's not tired. He keep coming. Right. He keep coming. First round I did with him, I remember. That was ease back, but it was hard. And then I couldn't figure that guy out. And then second round and then nothing. About the fourth, fifth round, I was just like, okay, I kind of got his path. But if you think about fighting, that was on the last round that I right? figured that guy out. You yeah. know, So he's super awkward, different style. So... Yeah, I think I, I think, and I'm like you. I I like Adesanya, and I I and I would love to to see him fight Pereira again. So I'm right. big both guys fan. But I think Draco is gonna be too much. I think Draco knows how to beat. He knows he gotta be on the inside. Gotta be kind of like Bilal Muhammad against Leon Edwards. Mm -hmm. Full pressure, crazy. Don't get K. Go forward. Be on his face. Take him down. Be on his face. Eventually, he can break easy. I don't care if he's stronger. I don't care if he hits harder right now. I think Drickers Duplass is a, is a live dog. And you know what? You know one thing that, that a little story that gets that fight even more crazy? You watch that fight, Drickers against Sean Strickland yeah. back in January in Canada. Mm -hmm. That fight was very close. It was. Absolutely. Very close. So me and Hayden were here at the studio. <laughs> Going back till we remember when we bet on shit. Yep. So Hayden had a big bet on Drickus. I had a big bet on Sean. And we're just right next to each other watching the fights the whole time. And when the decision was being made, like, we both had no clue who won the fight. Like, obviously, when you're betting on your guy, you're like, oh, my guy won, right? You're biased. But it was very close. And I really think if, if Sean didn't open up with that, it was a cut or something, Headbutt. that got in, yeah. in his eye, 
if that never happened, I think Sean would have got the nod in that fight because that changed the whole fight. He and it also change. made it look worse with the optics too. So I just think that changed a lot. But then again, you but also you see what Sean did to Izzy. He could have knocked him out in that first round. He could have knocked Izzy out and Izzy, you know, Izzy he recovered. Tried, yeah, I was there. And then but the the in my humble opinion, they should run it back right away because yeah. that fight was very close. Yeah. And but I think that's why they're making Easy back because Easy's a superstar yeah. that was kind of like taking his time after the loss. <clears throat> and we got a champion on Sean Strickland that has no filter. That guy go crazy. He says whatever he wants. He pull a gun on people. He go crazy. <laughs> right. And it's kind of like awkward to the UFC to have this guy as a champion. This guy, we don't know. The guy has no filter. He's going to go crazy on the <laughs> couple community. He's going to say whatever he wants. Yeah. And then on the other side, we have a, a champion sitting down right there. So after that loss, I do believe the UFC think, you know what? <laughs> You're not going to put that crazy dude to fight for the title again. Yeah. Let him sit around a little bit. At the same, if I got to ask back you, here if you were to fight for the title. Yeah. I got to ask you, Gilbert, if you were put yourself in Sean Strickland's shoes right now today, what would you do? Because that Robert Whitaker fight is there. Or do you just sit around and say, fuck this? I, it was a close fight. I got robbed. However, he wants to say it. I'm just gonna wait for the title fight. What would you do in his spot right now? He's trying to wait, but you think the USC's against it though? Yeah, I, do, I, do I too. think he's got to keep working like he did. That's why he got. I think he's got. That's how he got his first. Yeah, it's a good shot, point. Yep. Fighting everybody, beating everybody, and eventually he was number seven. I think when he yeah. became a champion, they call him. We get an opportunity. He said, for sure, I'm going. Boom, went there and then got the title. I didn't believe he was going to do it. And he did. Yeah. Right now, don't stop, you know, especially right now. As crazy as he is, a lot of people identify with him. He has a crazy fan base. Yeah. Crazy. And the <laughs> crazy thing about him was International Fight Week, we were there. All the fighters, they bring all the fighters. It's supposed to be Connor and, and Chandler. Right. Yeah. But... I end up being Jiri and, and uh, Pereira. I was there doing a couple of appearances. And Saturday, I remember, was a full day Saturday. And then I had a couple of appearances, but I have a little break. <laughs> and I was, I was leaving to, to get some food to my break. Ozzy, Reed Harris, they came running at me and said, hey, Uber, please, can you do us a favor? I said, yeah. Uh, Sean Strickland had one hour and a half appearance, but after 25, 30 minutes, he left. There's <laughs> a lot of people on the line. Can you come back? Are you going to get paid? I said, for sure. I used to do a lot of security of back in Brazil, crazy teaching, for sure. And then I got back in and I was on his line. But I'm just thinking about it like, and this guy was the champion, and the guy is able to do that crazy stuff. You, as a CEO or as a part of that promotion or part of that guy that works behind the scenes, it's very hard to want that guy as a champion, you know. And they call the guy who have an appearance, the guy leaving the mirror or of the appearance. And they they go to a press conference and and the and you talk bad about the guy, and the guy talks shit back, and then <laughs> right. you say, I'm gonna kill you. You say that again. <laughs> I don't care about fighting. Yeah. It's very annoying. Exactly. Having the guy as a champion of your promotion. I He's think, such a volatile guy. And yeah. Chris Curtis, his best friend, wants nothing to do with him now. Go right, ahead. Right. Now, I was going to say, I think Strickland kind of became a little bit of a star, though, in a way. Like, he is a very niche fan base that's gotten very big all of a sudden. Like, so I get, I get what you're saying. Like, the USC might not want him to be a champ, but I feel like when he won, like, you know, it his fan great. base got very big, bro. Yeah, and people, very he's, big. he's, the U.S. is all about free speech. Say what you want. Do what you want. I mean, so. Yeah, but no. no I know. I get it. I mean. But I'll future. never forget when Duplessis said that cold line to him at the press conference. It was like, oh, I want to beat you cool. worse than your dad did. And I, like, I was like looking at the screen. I saw Sean Strickland. You could tell that really fucking got to him. He turned his head. Yeah. He didn't know what to say for a couple seconds. And then he, I forget what he said after that. He, he was like, I will be, take your soul or I don't know. But you could tell that. That one hit home to him, yeah. bro. You could just tell. So, but you know, the UFC 297, the, the split decision with Duplessis and Strickland, fine. Yeah. You talk about immediate rematch, but let's not forget the heat on this matchup at 305 while we're all juiced for this. Yeah. Who's going to be the African king? Whatever. Yeah. Who's really from Africa? Whatever it may be. This, the fact that this matchup came back around, I think is great because you don't always know what you're going to get when these things don't happen. Yeah, so, yeah. for me, but if I'm Strickland, it's like to me, the matchup for Bob Whitaker 
Uh, who's to say that's a harder or easier matchup than who you might get as yeah, champ? You know, so right. I, I, to your point, yeah. he is cut from a cloth of a guy that wants to keep fighting. And and so to me, to your point, no, be change, yourself, right? keep rolling. Do, do you. Yeah, yes. keep doing you. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, but yet, with all that being said, who's going to be the king of Africa? And I... Uh, I and I'm I'm with you everything. I want other Santa win because he's a champion, but Drikos is my guy. I gotta go with Drikos and I think he's gonna win. If he does, the Bilal Muhammad strategy, he's gonna win. Like, yep. Yeah. You know, and with time off when these fighters have time off, right? All you guys are different, right? You got certain guys you know well. A guy like Brendan Allen, who you know well, who I know works harder now Super in between hard. fights than he did three, yeah. four years ago. I know that for a fact. Yeah, but you got a guy like Bilal Muhammad who just had 14, 15 months since he fought you to get ready for Leon and yes. knowing he's getting ready Super for Leon. Ready. So I believe Adesanya regardless of maybe he's on the backside down the mountain of his peak. But I think this time yeah, period yeah. for him, I think he, we are going to see as good a possible version. Yeah. I can't wait. This And look, this UFC is- pay-per-views are always yeah. get me excited. But this one is getting yeah. me excited as yeah. few I can yeah. remember in a long time. Do you it, feel like it, the hype has died a little bit, though? Like when this fight was supposed to be made like a year ago, like a lot of people are talking about that. Like, mm. like a week ago, everyone forgot this fight was even happening. Like obviously we're on fight week now. Yep. But this fight, I think, has the hype has died a little bit down since Adesanya got in that octagon and got in, you know, when Duplessis beat Whitaker and all that went down. I feel like it has, the hype has died a little yeah. bit, but I feel like it's coming back now this week. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I, there's no denying that it's yeah. died a little bit, but it's up to the promotion to, yeah. to ramp us all back up and up to yeah. shows like this. 100%. Yeah. As you know, how about show me the money? You Look at you guys just absolutely crushing it. I'm allowed to say that. Proud of you boys. Appreciate and nice you, to, to just be able to work with you. I was in your seat last time, but nice. Gilbert on the <laughs> mic, impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, that's right. Because. You oh, were going McConnell. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I was yeah. filling in for That's right. For that's, right that's right. I know we're gonna not going to talk too much about your fight, but yeah, what we'll an absolute. I mean, like, I know we'll do that in a couple of weeks, but I can't wait for oh, that well, one. I got to get your opinion, bro. Plus 120? Is that the line? The level of disrespect? Is that the line? Plus 120. Interesting. And yeah. I did it open? It opened very close to a pick em, so it hasn't moved much. I don't think. I think, think. it opened around. No, it opened with like. Around that oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. You don't mind the line. You take a little disrespect. Don't mean anything, bro. Free money. What a fight! Can't wait yeah. for it, man. I love it. And then, and then I, I kind of, I didn't. I end up losing to to Jack. It didn't look good against Bilal. I think that to kind of take a little a big thing yeah. of that. You know, oh, okay. Right. Let's see. Last fight. Oh, he didn't look good. Yeah, uh, Sean Bray looked very good against Calvin Gastelum. Yeah. Uh, I hit on that round three sub, by the way. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, oh, you yeah. hit that one. Yeah, you hit that one. Hit that one, yeah. I had round two, three. I spread but, round two, three. But I'm excited. Three, three, the sorry. only thing is going to be in the Apex, we talk a little bit before the, the party. Sometimes it's a little, I don't know. Sold out. Everybody asking me, how can I get a ticket? Yeah. He's asking, how yeah, can I get yeah. a ticket? It's going to be crazy. I'm telling you, I that event. Know, so 25 footer, right? You how does that, there? 25 foot octagon versus the 30 yeah. footer, does that mean I much like, to you? I love it. I love it. I like, yeah. I like it because we're going to be. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. For his game, for my game, he, he gets everything to be a nice fight because he, we're both grapplers, we both can strike. Yeah. So we're going to be on each other's face. No crowd, not too loud. I can hear his coach. He can hear my coach. Yeah. The thing with the Apex, yeah. I'm a big arena guy. I love the, the so arena. Of You're beloved by the fan I love, base. I love, yes. But the intimacy that we do have the Apex, hitting the guy in here that, oh, uh, uh, like you know, yeah, it's better. Like he's in the coaches, he's screaming at the guy, do this, do oh, okay. They don't like what I'm doing this. So he, he, like that thing for me, I like that intimacy, like yeah. very, very much. It's more yeah. raw street fights back in the 80s that like just you and the guy, and then like let's go, like no crowd, and we're gonna stay here until one guy quit. I, I like that. That, that mentality, they're like, okay, who's going to quit? I'm not going to quit, bro. Let's go in. Yeah. I just, the yeah, intimacy I'm, of I'm fighting, pumped. I like very much. I yep. can't wait for that fight, bro. All right, we got to, before we move on from the, the 305 car, we got to give a pick for the show. Okay. So here's what we do, Jason. Talk every show me. now, we just, every person in the room just gives one pick that in their mind is not losing. 100%. So it can be very conservative. It can be over one and a half rounds. It can be a minus 300 favorite. It can be a fight to not go the distance. It can be literally anything you I, want. 
Let and we're going to go put first. it together as a three leg parlay. <laughs> I'll let Gilbert go with the let first me go leg. First. Uh, I'm, I was going Gam Rob, but he might eat a knee on the way. <laughs> so, and that might go out of the way. But one yeah. guy, in my opinion, one guy that's not losing this fight, this. Sunday in Australia, here Saturday night is gonna be Steve Ursa. I knew you. I knew you. That guy is not. Okay. The, I uh, was going. Mateo was getting robbed, but yeah. Dan Hooker, he's a dog, and then Mateo's he goes down so much he might. I don't think it's happening, but he might eat a knee on the way. So I'm not yeah. taking Mateo's getting robbed. I'm taking Steve Ursa. All right. So leg number one on Fliff. Remember, guys, you guys can tail this on the YouTube description right now. Fliff will give you $25 in free coins to get some action with. Code show me, S-H-O-W-M-E, or just click the link in the description. Leg number one, Gilbert is locking in Steve Ursig at minus 180. I'm going to go to Jason for leg number two. So this isn't going to be my second leg, but I absolutely love Herbert Burns plus 550. Let's go, HB. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, um, isn't it amazing how much we all love Steve Ursig? It's yes. like, I hope yeah. Kai Fronts, you know, Me bulletin too. board material. Yeah. I hope he sees this, you know, because, but I'm with you, dude. It's like, I can't envision yeah. waking he's up too, Sunday morning with Steve Ersek having lost that fight. Yeah. Can't he's see it. So well that rounded. was certainly going to be one of mine. You know, I, and I hear you on Mataj Gamrot. It's also not going to give too much juice to your parlay, which I want to juice it. So I'm going to go with the main event. Not to go the distance. Okay. I just, I even if it's right. Izzy, I just, I, I don't think we're seeing 25 minutes. Yeah, I don't think we're seeing 25 so minutes. So leg number two, Adesanya versus Duplessis on the Fliff app. Fight to not go the distance. Minus 155. Okay. So, so that's, that's on me for leg number three. Now I got to ask you guys, can I go with a little riskier of a, of a play or mm -hmm. should I just go with something that I know is not losing? No, you got to go for sure the one that's not losing. So, uh, so can, you guys are one and go, one. I wanted to go with uh, with Walker at plus one and five. Oh, but. yeah. Go with the Walker. Dude, I like that. You like so, it? Go with the Walker. Yeah. Your first parlay was better. Was was the, the odds last week was almost even money, right? Or close to with it your parlay. It was closer. But, yeah, but the first week, one was three to one, basically. Right. We hit that one. Exactly. The second one was, that, was that hard. Yeah, so you need to throw, yeah. throw big All right. Svelte Walker. I, if you guys are cool with the pick, I'm going to go. I'm gonna lock in. Uh, I'm gonna lock in Walker here. Nice, Walter Walker. Yeah, they secure. I said that right. Walter yeah, Walker. The bag. Plus one hundred five on the flip app. Let's take a look now. This is juicy. A hundred dollars returned you four twenty four. I like wow. it. That is a four twenty four. That's a so a total payout of five twenty four. So that's four twenty four in net profit. That is the show lay. That we're going with. So <laughs> Dude, what that's a hit. We can do a risky one too. If it's off the record, we're not. But if if we want to put together just a risky fun one, we can do that now. Where we each just give one pick that's a little more risky. Maybe a, why don't we do a dog parlay? I like it. Let's do a dog parlay just <clears> for okay. fun. I'm gonna go with my with an underdog here on the card. I gotta go with my guy Ty to Ivasa, bro. That's my underdog of the card. Carlos brought his favorite, right? Yeah, he's a big favorite. Uh, Valter is an underdog. <laughs> you can pick him, yeah. I mean, I he kind of double dips us, but 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 go. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good fight too. Ricardo Ramos, Ramos against Josh Colibau. Yeah. <sighs> Josh like came to the. Both guys came and killed Cliff. Yeah. Both guys are very good. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Uh, you can go Herbert or Reyes. Dude, Reyes is is a huge underdog. Tom Nolan gets tagged. Yeah, but he you just is, don't know what to expect. He's the Reyes. biggest in the dog. Like, yeah. give me a raise on that. All right, Reyes, what are you thinking, Jason? I know you already said earlier. Should we do it? <laughs> I just, I, 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 you know, I remain that I am rooting for Israel Adesanya's greatness, but Duplessis is plus money. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's the leg. Yeah. Drickus Duplessis. Right. I just feel like he gets. So it this done. is an unofficial play, guys. We're not going to track this, but this is going to be for fun. We're going Duplessis as a dog. We're going tied to Ivasa plus one seventy five as a dog. What was yours, Gilbert? Mine Reyes, was Reyes. plus six eighty. So this one is insane. This one is insane. Hold on, it's plus four thousand. <laughs> so a hundred dollars is going to return four thousand dollar four thousand on Fliff. Again, that is not going to be tracked on the show, but. If you guys want to sprinkle, right? Give them the sprinkle sign. <laughs> if you want to sprinkle, then throw, the, throw, the, throw 10 bucks on name? it. What's yeah, nothing name? crazy. Uh, salt salt puppy. bite. Yeah. Or what's his name? No. Nah. Is that his name? Uh, who does a little sprinkle? Yeah, yeah. I should know. So, <laughs> do you think value on Duplessis plus three to one to by knockout? 
or three, three and you a You know quarter. what a lot of people are saying is plus 750 on the submission. Interesting. Well, I See, I knew you were going to do something. So Adesanya, I mean, I think he's really good defense on submissions, Adesanya, but yeah, he Duplessis does. has some subs prior yeah, to this. Duplessis is awkward. He, he just is. Crazy. He stances. He I think if, if I'm uh, Drickers Duplessis, it's easier to hire. I will hire because I don't know a lot of guys, but I will hire a guy to do maybe a Jalen Turner, maybe a guy that looks mm. like that, to look like easy, to watch and do that thing. So yeah. get me ready. But on the other side, if I'm out of the to get a guy to do drinkers is, bro, very right. hard. Right. Very hard. Like, yeah. Mm. A couple of guys are very tricky to mimic, to be ready. Oh, they trained together. Yeah, that was five years ago, bro. Right. Four right, years, right, five right, right. Yeah. He's, a, he's a different guy, bro. But you, if you, so if you were, we, a we if you, are not the same guy five years ago. Exactly. Bro. How much better you got right. in every area? Like, yeah. if you were a better man, you take him, if you, and you had to pick one or the other, you go on Adesanya by, or you're going Duplessis by knockout at three to one, or you think that the submission is just as likely and you can get seven to one on it? I think, uh, I think Drickers can take a at the same. I don't think it will be a submission. I think he can yeah. put him in a bad position. And go. I agree. Yeah. And like get him so freaking tired. That's before probably that. the play for you just because you like the under. You like the fight to not go the exactly. distance and the underdog. Exactly. So TKO but for me, sense. right, I, I sometimes betting on MMA takes away from the viewing experience. So for me, if I just place a straight it. bet... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I place a straight bet on the fight to not go the distance and root, uh, uh, nothing I like more than just rooting for Violence, someone to finish yeah. the fight. That's what everyone loves. It's like it's the opposite in in football. You go you go over exactly. So in NFL or in football, you would bet the over because you want to see a lot of points. You want to see touchdown passes and big runs. And in MMA, you go under because you want to see violence and someone get finished. So that, that's kind of the fan way to bet, you know, it's yeah. a fan experience. Square fan way to but bet, exactly. But it's miserable when you have the fight to not go the distance and then they just sit there and you get uh, Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis staring at each other. Right. Or, uh, you know, something like that. So Well, and also too, I'll say is yeah. even in this main event, right, it could be very clear to me in round two that it's going five rounds. You know, sometimes you can tell it's right, just not, right. you know, where they fatigue. Anyway, 100%. go ahead. All right, before we finish up the show, there's a huge PFL card this weekend. I'm going to be at the Hard Rock. You're going to be there? I got a, uh, either Friday or Saturday. I'm going to find my way Friday, to you. That would be sick, yeah. yeah. So Hard Rock this weekend. If you guys are there, come say what's up. Hollywood, Hard Rock in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. Um, the PFL card is Friday night. I want to run through a few of these fights. Kyle, if you can put up the, the PFL card. Not the doc, but the actual I gotta, card. Yeah, I, I, know, I, I know Gilbert's I, already going to pick right there. I for sure. I might, gotta, I might go, but... If I go, I'm just go there in and out because it, you guys know I'm in training camp. Saturday, we got a crazy circuit yeah. in the morning. I got to be rest up and ready for that. But if I go, I didn't decide either. I got tickets. I go to support my guy, Impa Kasanganai. Yes. This guy is a monster. He's a lock. He's, He's a five to one favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who we said is not losing, or Sag is not losing. Who was yeah. the other one we said? Uh, I put in. If in in our parlay, yeah. I put in the main event not to go five rounds. These yeah. guys not losing one hundred percent. They yeah. fought each other. So this is a Moicano uh, ten thousand dollar bet. And Joshua Silvera is a very tough dude and very nice guy. I, I he he's dead. Connor is a little uh, he's a little like yeah. chew like a head coach. So he kind of keep it very don't talk much. You know, uh, mm -hmm. but he says a very nice dude. I like this guy Joshua Silvera very much, but he just fighting. A freaking monster. I have no idea how this guy was making 170 because he's like two. Huge. 215 lean, maybe 3% yeah. body fat, yeah. a monster, explosive, hits hard. And, he's, and the, the best thing about this guy, he's so humble and the guy works extremely hard. Yeah. Like, you know, this guy that is just hungry to learn is a couple guys, they work very hard, but they're not. Let me get the right word, but they're not as humble to learn. Yeah. These guys speaking everyone's brain. Hey, what are you thinking? And doing extra work. What do you coach? He finished and he, he records all his points. Hey, what do you think about this? You should do this. And then these guys that shadow boxing that move yeah. like 300 times after training gets before. Help so many guys. That's a. What did you think? So, Impa versus Johnny Evelyn fight. 
I had oh. a big bet on Johnny Eblen, and I had the sweat the yeah. shit out of that because he was like that a three to one favorite. Cool. I think Johnny. I think Ampa might have arguably won I that fight. I think Johnny won. It's very close. It's super close, but it's those losses that this guy just go to a different level. You know, yeah. you see like a couple guys not hating on anyone, but remember when Paulo Costa was on the tearing, coming very crazy, then he lost to Adesanya. And then he show up to fire Marvin Vittori, super big, and they changed the yep. weight. And then he lost it again. He wasn't on that. But you see a couple guys that they lost one fight. Like, remember Robbie Lawler when he lost to Johnny Hendricks? Look at Whitaker right yeah. now. Look at Whitaker. Oh, Whitaker, Whitaker loses too. the DDP, and now look there at... There you go. Yeah. But remember Robbie Lawler? I think he lost to, to Johnny Hendricks, and then he came back knocking everyone out, and then he beat Johnny Hendricks, and then he yep. fought Rory McDonald. Bro, this guy, he just got better after yeah. that loss to Johnny Eblen. He changed, to, he got even better. He's got, and what? Yeah. He got knocked out back in the day, Joaquin Buckley on that, yeah. right? And looking yeah. now, he's a champ and million bucks. How come yeah. that guy? Right, there you go, exactly. Yeah. God. What do you like? What do you think about this one? Anything here? Uh, When the guy, his name finished with Adav, Adav, <laughs> my Dov. All right, so you got a V in the end of the last, then. What about here? That's your same thing. When they finish with my <laughs> dog, I pick. love. I want your opinion on this Collard fight because yeah, Collard's a small dog here. Yeah, that's a tough fight because Primus might grapple him. And then if Primus is able to take him down, yeah. he changes the fight. But I like Collard striking, movement, angles. I think. Oh, I got to get your fight. Go up to the Sabatella fight. So Pat Downey texted oh, me. Sabatella is a monster. I know, but he said that. Am I saying this right? Day run? How do you say it? Day run. Cuban guy? Eight, I think he's eight and zero. He said that this dude's like he's like a five to one underdog here. He's like plus five hundred. He said that he's pulling off the upset here. Oh yeah. Oh, that guy's that's enough for Matty Betts to pull the trigger. You can <laughs> be guy, sure. Sabatello is good. He's I know. He's on the Bellator like a monster, but I like Sabatello a lot. But I don't so know this the dude's other guy. eight and zero from Florida. That guy's winning for sure too. Yeah. That Gian, the guy on the left, yeah, he's winning for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, I, I do want I want you to check out this guy though, Lazaro Deron, Cuban eight zero, choking dudes out, TKOs like, uh, I, I don't know. It might be enough for me to sprinkle. Sabatella is really good though. So but, I got a quick question for yeah, you, right? Yeah. You've gotten to know a lot of these fighters, right? And my yeah. guess is, last time Gilbert fought in March, you probably didn't know him nearly as well as you know him now. Yeah. Is that safe to say? So oh, when he fights sure. on September seventh, yeah. For you, that's definitely going to be the dude that you are closest with making that walk, oh, right? For sure, it's going to be a different experience for you. I yeah. think well, I don't I even just, have a question. I just but experienced it with Moicano, Jalen Turner. Now I put 10k on Moicano as a dog. I'm very inclined to do the same thing on Gilbert. I'm getting, I hear you. It's around well, the same number too. I mean, Moicano was a little bit bigger of a dog. So are you flying out there or what? I want, yeah. You just need to open up that apex a little bit. Even if I can't get tickets, I'm still going to fly out there and go to Vegas and figure it out. We need to just do a little home of fight support and find our way out there. We're going to call Ali. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That'd be hype. Ali, I need tickets, bro. Please try to see Gilbert get that round two TKO. That's what I'm betting on, by the way. I like that. Round two TKO? Two, Two, three TKO. That's what I like. All right. Like, subscribe. We got to wrap up here. Jason, appreciate you, bro, for coming Thank on. you, boys. Anytime. See, hopefully see some of you guys at the Hard Rock this weekend. Shout out to Jason Ennick. That was that was a nice episode. Hard, hard Always. job to full lean to more. Yeah, man. Tough great. shoes to fill. Money. Yeah, I know. Money. Did my best. Show me the money, baby. We'll see you next week.